scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. For God don't know. So we're talking of knowledge here. Remember now, the tree of the knowledge, the tree of the knowledge, there is knowledge in the tree. The central thing there is knowledge, not fruit, knowledge. The tree of the knowledge. Are we together now? If you have the tree of the knowledge of banana, that tree will not, when you eat banana from that tree, it teaches you something. The tree is a lecturer. The fruit in the tree can teach men certain things. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And now he's saying that God knows that in the day, remember all of this will happen in a day, both the death and this, that you eat thereof. The first thing is that your eyes shall be opened. That means a kind of illumination will come to you. And then ye shall be as what? As gods knowing good and evil wow that means one characteristic feature between gods is that they have a supply of knowledge and the power to use that knowledge to produce good to produce evil are we together now that whoever can manipulate knowledge and bring an outcome of good and manipulate knowledge and bring an outcome of evil is no longer a man he didn't say he's the god of heaven but he said this one is not man are you getting the discussion now knowing good and evil verse 6 and when the woman saw that the tree was what now notice she didn't see anything evil again the tree is walking now this is how the tree works what did the woman see good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desired to make one wise what kind of wisdom we don't know but we know that there is wisdom in the tree she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave unto her husband with her and he did eat you see that adam was there with her next verse and truly like satan said the eyes of them both were what open so he didn't entirely lie he said this tree can open your eyes but he didn't say what that open eye will do and so their eyes were open and they knew that they were naked and they sowed fig leaves and all of that and all of that now when you read all the drama that happened when God came down and said, man, what is happening? He said, this woman, blah, blah, blah. Just let's go to verse 11. I'll read just verse 11 and then I'll begin to teach. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Then he said, hast thou? Because this knowledge, you should not have gotten it. There is no way as a man without an assistance, your knowledge is limited. Although you are a man without sin. This should not be given to you. Then he says, have you eaten of the tree? And he says, I commanded you not to eat.
it you read on and he said the woman you put the woman said the serpent and he was angry and began to curse them but something interesting happened he said man has become like one of us just follow me man has become like one of us i thought the bible says he created man image and after his likeness now god is saying something is wrong man has become like one of us and for that we will not allow him in this state to eat of the tree of life again because if he takes of the tree of life you know the tree of life was designed to keep you living in whatever state you are so now that this guy's the whole plan has been corrupted if we allow him to eat of the tree of life then redemption will no longer be possible so let's drive him out so that it can be possible to redeem this man are we together now please sit down right from genesis we see that there is a fight for knowledge the bible tells us that the first tree listen carefully the first tree was not called the tree of the knowledge of life it was called the tree of life but the second tree works by giving men information that it supplies you an information that gives your life good but with it eventually it destroys you are we together now jesus there is a tree of the knowledge of good and evil that is interwoven in this system this cosmos that we live in please listen very carefully many people like Eve have not received the miracle of understanding to discern that the trees that they continue to partake of are poisonous trees that are ministering death to their destinies and death to their lives and so my exhortation really tonight is a wake-up call to open your eyes to something very deep about the destruction that is happening to many people that they do not know they continue to die daily not as paul said by their continual connection with this tree and that you will never be able to do much for the kingdom until you understand this in the name of Jesus Christ I look at lives today as a man of God I look at people's destinies and I see certain results in their lives that I wonder how those kinds of results would have been produced are you getting what I'm saying now yes I know that these results are a product of a philosophy a product of an ideology that has been sold by a system that has been sold by a sociological context that does not honor God nor have regard for the ways of God are we together now remember the tree of life based the tree of the knowledge of good and evil the Bible tells us it is very tempting when the woman saw it there was an attraction are we together now many people's lives today have become a mess and has become complicated i am almost afraid when i look at our society today and look at the level of confusion the level of aimlessness that surrounds the lives of people people are almost clueless about everything in life the young and the old alike the rich and the poor alike and we do not know the source of this confusion i want to show you tonight if i can successfully show you and we pray my assignment tonight has been fulfilled are we together colossians chapter 2 blessed be the name of the lord we'll read verse 8 colossians chapter 2 and verse 8 read with me please look up one to read beware lest any man spoil you through what 
philosophy uh -huh. and vain deceit after the traditions of men here's my key point and after the methodology the modus operandi the system of this world the greek word here is aeon an age and a mindset that is brought with that age that do not let the word spoiled here is plunder take advantage of do not let any man take advantage of you through philosophy through vain deceit through the traditions of men after the methodology there is a system that this world operates listen carefully there is a way and manner that has been sold humanity as a race have been scammed by a system a system that has advocated a way of life and a template of living and the bible says that compared to god's standard that template is wrong now but it's very difficult because the character of that tree is that it has good and we live in a society where we are governed by results which is an advantage for satan because then he can project the good that comes with that system and with it he can buy the loyalty of people by the time you can prove to me that a method is working regardless of the side effects are we together now we have products right now that are 60 percent um 60 percent potent in their result and we believe that those products are enough and we sell them so we live in a world where once there is an evidence that something works we package it and we go mainstream and we market it to people but we do not know that that good the bible says that on that is a strategy that satan projects the good in every evil thing no evil thing comes as evil even satan comes as an angel of light are you getting me now so the character of evil is such that it projects the good first so that you are baited by that good like you dangle a worm attempting to catch a fish and the fish comes hoping to eat the worm not knowing that there is a hook behind are we together now and then that fish is caught up by the hook that don't let any man spoil you there is a philosophy in this world there is a philosophy in this age that when men subscribe to the bible says the side effect is that it is as though an armed bandit came to your house and plundered you the confusion that is in people's lives today on almost every subject matter is a call for concern that we must get back to understanding the disaster that is encapsulated in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil now society may not agree government may not agree because there are statistics to show that the tree has good are we together now so when you tell somebody come my dear when you tell someone um give your life to jesus and throw away some of the herbal things that were used in your village this lady will prove to you how that herbal medicine healed five people are you getting what i'm saying now everybody say good shout it again say good and the lady will tell you she's on five points now because they said any time is time for exam rob that thing before you go to the exam hall and my goodness did it work so now that lady will not listen to your proposition to say i should throw it is it just because it has a little side effect the benefits outweigh the side effects you will say the same way you say salt one pinch of salt cannot affect a whole you know bowl of soup you don't put the same size of vegetables as you do the salt yet sometimes just for putting a little more you can completely ruin that soup that's how evil is evil does not have to be the same size with good it just has to be present sufficient enough to create an effect are you getting me now 
you are not the only one who is salt evil too is salt are you getting what i'm saying you are not the only one who is salt evil too is salt that's why the bible says a little living a little not much a little please follow me very carefully this lady now can serve god but she will hold on to her charms because if the charms were 100 percent failed she will throw it obviously the devil knows nobody ever walking with the devil has 100 percent evil no he doesn't walk that way he's smart enough to know ask an umbrella why he's still stealing he will tell you the last stealing my god we had 11 million and that 11 million changed our life i even gave tight it looks good ask him now to stop stealing the memory of the 11 million will make sure he goes back to steal are you getting what i'm saying now evil blatantly will usually drive you away but the good component in it is what will give you the same power to remain so the bible says do not eat of that tree of good and evil there are philosophies my brothers and my sisters listen carefully there are mindsets there are belief systems that we have adopted that come with this age the bible tells us they are traceable to a tree they are traceable to a root that markets good to men and at the end destroys them thank you my dear the bible tells us again that this system that we live in has something called the wisdom of this age the wisdom of this age first corinthians chapter 2 i'm just trying to gather my scriptures before i begin to build you will be so blessed first corinthians chapter 2 paul is teaching the church in corinth and here's what he says first corinthians chapter 2 verse 6 how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect and so you are not confused paul now begins to distinguish what that wisdom is that kind he says yet not the wisdom of that means this world has its own kind of wisdom wisdom by its character produces results it doesn't matter what kind of wisdom are we together now but the bible is saying there is wisdom that is not the wisdom of god it is the wisdom of this world there is even the wisdom that is the wisdom of the princes of this world hmm. but the bible says all of them come to naught. what does that mean that means the end of them is death is destruction the wisdom of this world the wisdom of the princes of this world that we pride ourselves in that we build the entire philosophy of our lives the bible says that wisdom whoever walks with that dimension of knowledge doom and destruction is inevitable look at me please most of the issues in our world today are only symptoms of a bigger problem are we together most of the issues in our world today the issues that we face that we we believe are the issues that are depriving man and mankind from his dignity most of them are only symptoms of a bigger issue the same way someone can have headache and a doctor can say no this is not headache it is malaria the headache is a symptom of something meaning if you take panadol it may give you a temporary relief but you are not going to be healed from that malaria until you are properly treated we spend our time addressing symptoms we write books about symptoms listen carefully we hold conferences on symptoms and very few people are willing to go to the root and deal with the foundation 
that brings about this this tragic problem of mankind the ideas of this world have made our lives complicated the life of the average person living in today's world is as complicated as a gadget this wisdom we have adopted like a virus they have created a web of complication they have robbed us of the simplicity of life destroyed everything about us family life has been broken down to nonsense the dignity of responsibility has been broken down to nonsense meritocracy godliness all of these virtues that build up society and advanced men they had been attacked for many years and now we are seeing the effect we have enjoyed the good of that tree for a long time and right now people are beginning to see the evil you are trying to run away but the tree said you received all of me you received the advancement that i gave you you received the technology that i gave you are we together now you received all of the enlightenment that i gave you now the other side of the equation is opening up and the war the crime the decadence and people are saying what kind of world are we in not knowing that is a food we ate and now we are paying for everything and let me tell you my brothers and my sisters that trees continue to dangle every day if we keep eating of that tree it will not only kill us it will kill our children and our children's children we have been so sucked into this system we do not even know we are in deception you can be so deceived and misled that you are not even aware that is deception underdevelopment security issues marital issues financial issues joblessness all of these things are symptoms of subscribing to a philosophy and a way of life that is antichrist and not built on life that tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil it was just a diplomatic way to say the tree of life and a tree of death because the end of it is death there is a way that cement right to a man he says but the end thereof are the ways of death as i counsel people i am coming to the conclusion that if we do not re-examine our philosophies there is no hope this issue is bigger than counseling this issue is bigger than laying on of hands this issue is bigger than a church service or a conference this is a deception that is institutional and it will take people who understand the holy spirit listen carefully people who understand the ways of god to summon the courage to say no something is wrong my grandfather followed this way my father followed this way now a system is forcing me to follow that way and you turn and say no way and receive the courage to fight to victory the contentions that will come by your refusal to eat of that tree write this down the world system that advocates this tree of good and evil thrives on three major things the world system that means the antichrist system of operation unfortunately that our society is built upon thrives on three things number one on godliness on godliness today's world our civilization today is against godliness let me explain to you what that means that means to do well in today's world it is mandatory you must act like there's no god are you getting what i'm just saying now if you want to do well in today's world you have to indoctrinate yourself and culture yourself into acting as though god does not exist and the world today will applaud you 
that means that this babylonian system this tree of the knowledge of good and evil is strangling away god consciousness from all of us and from the fabric of society the world system thrives on godlessness that means that the more you are aligned to this world it will make you in a way and manner that you do not see value for god again by destroying every christian monument in schools for instance that can help men be aware are we together now all those things are strategies to make sure that our children the same way this little boy now does not know what a typewriter looks like that is the same way one day people will not know anything about god you will say in the beginning was the word they said is that a novel they say what do you mean is that a novel that's king james they say well i'm not aware of what you are saying that is the goal of this system that a day will come when when you say bible study it's like you are telling a child lemonade and he says what is that what is bible sir i don't know what bible is and you say it's a book that contains the words of god he said who is god we will get there if a church does if the church does not rise and listen to what i'm telling you today you have a program on tv you mention jesus or mention god they edit it but they can leave explicit words in movies even for children don't mind that rating thing they write that means something is wrong and the church is watching and we do not understand that we are being forced to eat from the tree that contains good and evil ungodliness right now this is not this is not a generation of ignorance again satan has stopped using ignorance as a strategy this generation is too enlightened to entertain ignorance so he has started marketing this good and evil it's difficult to keep someone ignorant now because this is an inquisitive generation they want to know and so satan says instead of hiding the knowledge let's not hide it again let us corrupt it and market it so knowledge is available and affordable but largely let me tell you my brothers and my sisters over 70 percent of the information that mold and make the mind of people is a babylonian information that contains good and evil are we together you hear what they teach your children in school on one side you are happy that the children are learning biology but on the other side you know you are in trouble because good and evil are you get what i'm saying now yes ungodliness we have to preserve god consciousness and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil will never never preserve god consciousness when i was growing up 90 percent of our discussions were around school and god that was it right now the average young child the average teenager will talk about applications apps almost a thousand times before anything spiritual will be mentioned not god most young people are now spiritual and are now sociological not spiritual they are doing everything that's why they are promoting all the human activities that neutralize god consciousness like sports like music these are platforms that um that is 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 is, is very very is very very civil and so it doesn't allow the things of god are you getting what i'm saying now it's a strategy and god is waking us up on godliness number two this three of the knowledge of good and evil that makes up the world system operates by distorting spiritual patterns write it down this system operates by distorting spiritual patterns is one of the most dangerous effects of this wisdom of the world it distorts spiritual patterns 
I want you to listen carefully. Isaiah chapter 5. We'll read from verse 20 to 24. Isaiah 5, 20. Read with me. We're reading from 20 to 24. One to read. Woe to them that call evil good. Talk to me. And good evil that put darkness for light uh -huh. and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter what kind of a generation is this that replaces everything is an overhaul nothing was spared if it is good this society calls it evil if it is light they call it darkness if it is sweet they call it bitter verse 22 21 woe to them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight uh -huh. woe to them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink 23 we justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him do you know what this means that means they force you through their life and they compel you to bend until you are out of God's pattern he said they take away the righteousness of the righteous from him so you send your child to school as a responsible young boy from a Christian family and a system has been built by the time that boy is three years in that school it has taken away the righteousness from the righteous four next verse therefore as fire devoured the stubble and flame consumed the chaff so shall their root be as rottenness and their blossom shall go up as dust notice that they once blossom but the bible said it will go up as dust because they have cast away the law of the lord of hosts and despised the word of the holy one of israel in god's design and in his dealings with men he always creates patterns listen carefully god's patterns are his methodology his way of achieving his will it is not enough to obey god we must understand his pattern there is a pattern for wealth and finance in the kingdom there is a pattern for marriage in the kingdom there is a pattern for ministry there is a pattern for success but now we have a system that is forcing an ideology and even upon believers that makes us to violate patterns are we together now one of our dear ladies here she may be following online i think a few a few maybe about a month ago she left for the u.s and when she got to the u.s i think it was just like a few days or a week she just called me and I know there are people from US following so I, I, I don't mean to insult any culture but she told me that apostle there's, there's something wrong she said my roommates are all lesbians and there is a problem if I'm not mistaken I hope I'm right because she said it's like they are supposed to be believers and now she has to relate with them because there is not like here just for showing any sign of um, discrimination as it were they can sue you and of course if you are not not a citizen of that nation they can take you out immediately and this lady was confused completely confused and saying what is all this I come from a place in Zaria where even the person who is not doing well can be a pastor somewhere else and now I'm faced with roommates that are vocally part of a system let me tell you i don't mean to insult anyone but i told you most of those things are symptoms of a problem the problem is that we have deviated from god's pattern are you getting what i'm saying now yes the divorce rate in marriages is something that is scary including christian marriages one out of every two marriages will not last 10 years now please don't feel bad if anything has happened to your marriage i'm teaching here are you getting what i'm saying do you know why 
because two of you come husband and wife people have created their own patterns call good evil and evil good it was god who defined how marriage works society has now mentored people into creating their own laws about marriage is it not arrogant for you to come and meet something and not consult the person who created it and change the laws it's like coming to my house and meet my tap running and i come back and see that you've rewired the tap to the back of the house by what authority did you do this in my house so we have done it in ways that we cannot imagine in my my laptop i have the photo of a woman who married sardine big sardine not the small one you use yes sir yes sir are we together side by side you see them there i have it in my laptop now let me tell you this believers we are civilized people i'm not i'm not those kind of people that would teach you to not, not no 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 but i'm saying something is wrong we have to admit that something is wrong are we together now these people have their ideas they have money they have everything yet the marriage does not work and they are wondering because everybody the babylonian system has indoctrinated this lady you are not under any man you are a lady you are you know you are a wonderful person don't let any man look down on you society is these men are looking down on women this and that and the lady says yes if it's because of your money i will get my own job i will buy my own car i can be lord of myself if you drive me i can go and get my three bedroom flat we think it's a nice thing because if a lady proposes this in the world they clap for you they stand up and wave their hands and god sits on his throne and say this is not what i designed what are you designing like this already as i'm saying it you see how surprised me? how many of you have been sucked into it as i'm saying it now it's paining you which is a sign that god is delivering you because already you can see how the thing has sucked us and then the men we have our own we are even the ones that are more sucked into this thing because we need money we need to provide and we have deviated from god's pattern completely right now respect in marriage is based on who is richer not what god said I'm working, I'm earning 30,000. You are earning 10,000. You are not worth my respect. And society says, yes. One, one life coach somewhere who is not born again, has never read the Bible, is now writing books and pushing it to the church because they know we buy everything. Are we together? Yes. Something is wrong. A distortion of patterns. Let me tell you why patterns are important because patterns forerun the glory when patterns are violated the glory will never be seen never be seen there are ways today my brothers and my sisters i don't say this in any sarcastic way but there are ways go for pastors conferences and see how they teach men to raise money to run churches you will be amazed and you will be surprised because there is a pattern a babylonian system is marketing a strategy remember that the ark of god was supposed to be carried by a formula a man decided to invent a system to say let's let's make it easier for men and that man died what did he do that was wrong he only changed patterns it was violation of pattern that made a man lose his throne saul in the bible it was not in his office to offer sacrifices but because samuel was wasting time and the people started putting pressure on saul saul said what nonsense is this priesthood thing get me everything let me offer sacrifices as soon as he offered sacrifices samuel came and said what have you done he said you have done foolishly you would have allowed me to come and do this and god would have established your throne forever but now that you have done this your throne is taken away from you and samuel tried to weep and cry and god who is full of mercy said how long will you weep seeing that i've rejected saul as king in other words this guy is out of my program god your god every time the reason why we never see the glory of god in our churches 
we never see the glory of God in our families could it be that we are there eating of the tree of the knowledge of the of good and evil and is indoctrinating us to act and believe in ways that are violating God's pattern Gideon began to cry and told the angel he said why do we not see the miracles that our fathers told us and he began to tell Gideon there are idols there are things to be destroyed when it was time for Elijah to command fire from heaven he didn't just say fire come he said set me 12 altars there is a pattern set me 12 altars put water on it put this and fire came Cain and Abel offered sacrifices one was accepted one was rejected God is not only the God of the heavens he's a God of patterns God looks at how you did it not just that you did it patterns thank you my dear Exodus chapter 25 We'll read verse 9 and then we'll read verse 20. Very quickly, please. God is taking us somewhere tonight. According to all that I showed thee, listen, after the pattern of the tabernacle, this was the building of the tabernacle in the wilderness, and God was instructing Moses that according to all that I showed you, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, so shall thou make it in other words it was not moses's idea a blueprint was given his assignment was to replicate it there are many things see in your dealing with god you will not need too much of creativity you will need obedience it is when you are executing his will on earth that you will need in your dealing with god there are few things that will be your idea i know we don't like this how you know you are working with God is that a major part of your dealing is yes sir yes sir when it becomes in my opinion that's not God you are working with hmm. creativity is not for the secret place creativity is a system of dominion you don't bring creativity when you are in the secret place it is obedience it is your heart opening to say lord not my will but your will be done exodus 25 25 verse 40 and look that thou make them after what their pattern which was shown you not which you guessed not which you guessed a pattern was shown you make sure that you make it after their pattern very quickly give us chapter 40 and verse 16 40 and verse 16 i'm showing you that god is a god of patterns 40 and verse 16 read with me please one to read thus did moses uh-huh according to all that the lord commanded him go to verse 33 we are reading now verse 33 to 35 it says and he read up the court he's about to finish now listen carefully round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate read the last sentence everyone one to go so moses finished the work he finished everything according to pattern next verse and then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation God supervised until he followed the patterns to the dot. When Moses finished the work, he said, God, I finished. God said, I'm ready to come. The cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of God filled the tabernacle. Next verse. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation. Why? Because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of God filled. If the glory of God is not upon your church, could there be an explanation that something in the building or the system of that church is disaligned with divine patterns? Because if it is built according to pattern, the glory of God is like a stamp. You obeyed to the latter. If I look at your family and I do not see the glory of God, there is a pattern that you are not following are we together now i can look at your family and i see chaos here and there husband beating wife wife beating husband i must kill you i tell you 
someone is violating patterns if both people walk with divine patterns there will be glory that means the glory of god is also a confirmation that his patterns have been duly followed every time you finish that which you do it's important to look around and find out where is the glory of god in it as proof that this was done according to pattern could it be that the joblessness that is plaguing young people in nigeria could it be the reason why many of us are languishing in certain intense levels of hardship we may be well-meaning but could it be that we are violating divine patterns everybody say patterns say it again say patterns so the tree of the knowledge of good and evil causes you to be distorted from god's pattern there is a way god designed that marriage happens if you have to go on facebook and whatsapp to start doing this you may get a beast who is first a man before he becomes a beast which is consistent with the way that tree works is first good before evil so you meet somebody on facebook and he says i'll go and see your parents you are the lily of the valley are we together now and that person later becomes the beast of your destiny why because patterns god designed marriage come please to be one man and one woman don't feel bad by the time this guy says one woman is not enough and brings another woman everybody say patterns patterns start fighting from the realm of the spirit because the way god designed this thing is such that one woman the woman has to be alone for you to see the best of her in marriage by the time it is now two or ten or five something must go wrong it doesn't matter what they sign patterns have been distorted are we together when a man of 50 years old is writing why everybody say patterns have been distorted now listen i'm not i'm not being sarcastic i'm saying that it is usual for that man to not concentrate he is not supposed to be that alert and focused just like that because that longevity of time has accommodated too many things that are more serious than the subject matter so it is good that a young man bear his yoke in his youth lamentation chapter 3 that god says young men walk your walks while it is day night will come when you cannot walk it's a pattern starting early in life is a pattern that's why when the spirit of delay comes upon a family it makes sure that the first person is in is writing ssc at 25 it's not about delay satan is doing everything to make you go out of pattern it is why god in his mercy introduced a mystery called restoration are you seeing that now restoration is doing something to your life to bring you back in pattern when a woman has been barren and she's 60 years old with no child the devil knows that according to the normal course of life there will be a problem giving birth or at least giving birth to a very healthy child are you seeing that now satan knows that god is a god of patterns and so he supplies us knowledge that makes us to be and act in ways that continue to be defiant to god's pattern because his advantage in our life is that when we are out of pattern he doesn't need to pray against us the glory was designed to locate patterns and confirm it is god speaking to us i like you to look at your family as you are sitting down and suddenly realize that could this be why we never saw the hand of god in our family 
we were Christians. Oh, my father, my mother loved God, served God with all his and her heart. Lord, why is this family this way? Why are we not seeing your glory? I'm showing you. We are eating of a tree. And the more we keep eating of that tree, every time the glory comes to your house, it cannot rest. And the glory continues to search for a resting place. And sometimes it will wait for one full generation until you arrive. That's why some of you are standing up to say, Lord, that glory must rest. That glory has been hovering around my family since 1951. And nobody has aligned enough to allow that glory come. Lord, see, he said, Lord, and now arise, oh Lord. He said, come to your resting place. Until then, God said, I don't have a place to rest. And Solomon said, no way. We have to make for you, make for you a place. I can tell you, I understand a bit about the glory of God. I know why many people do not experience the glory. There are spiritual patterns. Babylon. You eat of that tree. Notice what happened to Adam. As soon as they ate of the tree, what happened? The glory lifted. It was the glory that covered them. They didn't even know whether they were naked or not. They didn't need clothes because the Shekinah of God covered them. As soon as they ate of that tree, imagine that every day you are eating of that tree. Think of what is happening to your life and think of what you are programming for your children's children already. So every time our fathers kept bowing in that shrine, they thought they were just paying homage. But something, Ichabod, the glory continued to move back and back and back and back and back. By the time you came to the scene, there was no glory again. Eleven ladies, beautiful ladies, no man to marry them. Thirteen ladies, no child. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, it's not just about prayer. When we return to the pattern, it's with a rush. The glory will come. When Moses finished, not when he started, God kept watching. Finish it and let my glory come. You know, from my paternal side, I never saw any blessed person. I think the most blessed person was my dad. And it's not like he was any blessing. I said, what kind of cause is this? How can you be so hardworking and love God? My father was a very honest man, loved God, but I, I said, no, no. Someone has to be angry oh, this night and say, no, my family has been eating from a tree. Eating from the tree can mean bowing to an idol. Eating from the tree can be an indoctrination that your salary is where your wealth is. You think it's a nice statement, but it's something that has been sold to you. So when you hear things like all blessings come from God, they only pass through men. It's an ideology that fights everything you've been taught about job. Oh, the boss said, I can waste your life now. And you say, sir, it's true. Ah, and the psalmist said, I lift up my eyes to the hills. I'm not confused. I know where my help comes from. Who is an arrogant man born of a woman that sits on a chair and says he will frustrate you? When there is God, An average man of God has been taught now that there are things that if they are not in your church members will not come please don't get me wrong I know if there's any man of God phoning I'm, I'm an excellent person but right now we are doing a lot of nonsense that will not help us see the glory of God nonsense members can drink tea they can eat rice they can eat yam and go because there is a pattern and I if I be lifted that's the pattern I will Paul may plant, Apollos may water, but it's not given to men to bring increase. Increase is a mystery that only the Lord of the harvest knows the formula. You say something now, people insult you and say you are arrogant, but the result is not showing. I want you tonight to start thinking the convictions that I hold, where did it come from? Where did it come from? There are many well-behaved ladies in this place. You started very well with God until you read a book. Until you joined some group of friends. 
who told you blast gentlemen don't talk anybody that talks just give it to them don't be doing like a mumu girl men are not like that i say eh, that's how it works you ate something and from that day your glory went away and the kind of men who would ordinarily come you find out that men increase but it's all nonsense kind of men men that you cannot carry to your parents something a pattern has gone wrong the one factor that was the reason why the glory of God was on you the devil now came and lied to you why be respect yourself be a well behaved girl be all of, let me tell you if you act like you're a mumu naive girl men will not come and you say okay I must reinvent myself to be a happening lady and that was the day your destiny helper went away There are many pastors some of you here have come here for impartation let me tell you i submit to you i am a student of patterns there are things that i know i found them god taught me i said lord i will never bend to them years ago i remember saying some things and i was insulted i was criticized because of it i said things about the glory of god I said things about increase and I said the way we are going if people do not understand these things they will pay for it people laughed at me and today is unfortunate for many people people see some of the results that God is producing it's not a charm it's patterns when a pattern is complete listen to me my sister you may come from a family where nobody knows you stay with god's pattern let his glory rest on you you will join people to wonder and say god what what am i doing and god says i'm the god of patterns man of god follow god's pattern for ministry and you will be afraid of what god will do through your life we like cutting corners cutting corners cutting corners I want a ministry but I want it now I want power but I want it fast I want this but I want it now and we find out that somewhere along the line the patterns are distorted and we never see the power of God are we together you do what I'm telling you now to do and see how society will laugh at you because we have trained people that the more godless we are the more happening they are you see that so this gentleman now is in the house and somebody advises him don't give your wife money because if you give her money she will not respect you that's what is in vogue now a demonic pattern because loyalty and submission was supposed to be by revelation not manipulation now the man is manipulating the woman and one day her own Ahitophel too will advise her and as soon as he advises her she will get a job and start a business and arrest the husband to prove to him that I am the man in the house my brothers and my sisters were in trouble if we don't return to pattern yes many marriages do not work because the men are not under authority you've heard me say it I have read a lot of books about marriage and I respect it but I submit to you that many of the books are dealing with symptoms do you know just for a man not having the fear of God there are hundred problems that can arise from that relationship now you can write a book to solve those various hundred problems but the root cause is that this man is not saved period when a man is not saved the tendencies that can come are infinite when a man is not under authority he can beat the living daylight out of this woman and say who cares i'm the lord of my life i don't listen to no man the arrogance of nebuchadnezzar it's a pattern why do doctors specialize why do they look at certain sicknesses and they can show you immediately because the sicknesses have patterns malaria has a pattern typhoid has a pattern a doctor can do this just do a quick examination and say wow quickly 
you need to see a consultant something is wrong without the patterns they have been taught to identify patterns that's it there is a pattern that gives you wealth in this kingdom many believers will not listen the world has its own system it will work but wait to see what it will give you later on it will give you high blood pressure you will be a liar you will be a thief you will destroy your life destroy the integrity of your family so two of us come show two of us can stand right now and i have i have some money here i have one thousand naira watch this he got his one hold your own hold it high he's hold. he got his one thousand by a babylonian system and i got my one thousand from a kingdom system you would think that two of us are holding one thousand no he's holding one thousand minus five years gone in his life that's why the blessing of the lord make it rich and added that means there is a kind of blessing that adds to if the blessing of the lord adds not that means there is a type that you can get but with it you will get this that's what happened to many of our parents by the time they are 55 years he found out that because of Horsley and the way he pushed like that he's about to retire but he's not here in again come on to me Jesus let's listen to him now let's listen to Jesus come on to me all you that are weary and heavy laden he promises that he will give you rest this is what many people can kill for look at this this thing you see many people have left God because of it many people are going to hell fire because of it yet they never find it and God tells you look there is a way I can give you this such that you will serve me and the world says the way I give you this is the, the more you denounce Jesus the more I give it to you so you keep saying Jesus I don't love you and mammon says that's how it works by the time you have plenty of this you have not only left the cross you have left everything God so when you come and say I can have this and yet have Jesus Babylon says you are joking but this is what God is training you into doing that you can have this and if God says let it go you drop it because you are aware that this is not your true value your true value is Christ we must return tonight to patterns otherwise we are going to suffer remember that every result is governed by something that something is a pattern the result you get is brought by the glory of God I've seen a little bit of the glory of God and I know when a man has found a pattern for the glory give up on that man if you want to try to take the glory in that area you're wasting your time for as long as the pattern is kept the glory will always always without fail tomorrow I'm in Lagos preaching at a conference and I know that their lives will never be the same because there is a pattern it's not because I'm Joshua Selman ah Elijah said bring me 12 stones I know how to make fire come from heaven man of God you are not a blessing to your members if you do not understand the pattern that brings the hand of God there is a pattern that men do on earth that brings favor there is a pattern that brings speed there is a pattern that brings the anointing I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the Lord I was glad there is something in the house of the Lord that changes the lives of people but today we are eating trees that make the things of God do you know the tree of the knowledge of good and evil teaches you that it is in the abundance of hustling you prosper have you had those teachings and have you seen people write books on them have you not read in your Bible that except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. 
the world will laugh at you for saying that have you not read again that the lord said except he watches over a city he says that the watchmen watch it in vain he said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night does that look like somebody's life that you know wake up in the morning sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow he said but he gives his beloved sleep and you see when you struggle and it does not work you will be angry at those who are getting it easy because patterns are supposed to create spiritual ease so you can step into a place and gyrate like a herbalist the power of god will fall he is going to fall and you keep looking at the ladies and nobody is shouting and you are angry what is no no sister shouting and yet someone comes with the ark and knows how to put 12 stones together and all of a sudden you are hosting a dimension of glory and you stand and watch and say how are these people doing it he has to be the devil no sir patterns oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you i will seek you in the morning and i have learned to walk in your everybody is doing just listen to me and follow me i was stupid enough to follow lord where do i go this way lord where do i go i remember when the lord told me put koinonia messages the audio put it on your facebook page and let it go lord what is that many ministries raise their money to run the church primarily through the media arm the media arm of every ministry is one of the major ways that God blesses them with. Lord, if you are doing that, how then are you going to bless the ministry? But Lord, how do you put a message on Facebook and then you said you will give it wings? The patterns of God. He uses the foolish things. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. A lady was talking to me that she was somewhere, one of our ladies, she used to be in the worship team, that she was somewhere on Kekena Pep and the person on Kekena Pep was playing my message. This was in, I think it was in Wari or so or Bielsa. Now, that one is no more advertisement. There is a finger. When you see results that are produced by patterns, you will know that this one is God. The pride of our generation will never allow us to humble ourselves and say, Lord, I don't know i don't know many young people do not know how to succeed and they would never go to god they will consult with all kinds of equally proud people like them and come up with all kinds of formula that is not consistent with the ways of god that formula may have worked in 1970 but i guarantee it will not work in today's world listen young people in nigeria we need to receive the formula for our advancement because computers have, re have replaced men a day will come when almost everything will be done by computers i don't know what the employment issue will be but there is there is a system in this kingdom when there was famine only two sets of people were spared the king and the prophet 
the king and the prophet did not go through famine any other person in between suffered the squalor of it you are the mighty God and he has told you there are people who will tell you about our teachings that they can stand and sit strangers i shared with you the testimony of a gentleman that bought flash new flash in the case flash drive bought a new flash drive in the case like that given to him the gentleman opened it went to slot it in his laptop and there was koinonia messages brand new flash because it's not men that market this thing they are spirits ask jacob in the house of laban do you not see that there was a pattern that made laban left for three days how many days three days he came back after three days and saw that his cattle had changed in three days do animals get pregnant in three days but a spiritual pattern was downloaded to the earth realm and things change that means there is something we can receive from heaven remember our popular scripture in this ministry knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish the dominion thereof in the earth there is a pattern my brothers and my sisters listen to me i want you to be careful what everybody calls the way did you hear what i said don't be afraid of being controversial be careful what everybody says is the way this is how people make it in life this is how people marry these days no sir many of our young children have been destroyed right now in churches because in a bid to create a western or a 21st century context we are robbing these young children of the quality of knowing god look at islam they have not changed their pattern the way they train children regardless whether it's in saudi arabia or whatever the pattern is the same they know the potency of that formula Is God speaking to us? Let me give us one more and then we'll pray. Is God speaking to someone tonight? So if I am not seeing the glory of God in my life, the explanation tonight is that there could be that I am eating, I am partaking of an information that may be mainstream, it may be popular. When I talk to this, my adorable gentlemen, they are absolutely great people. They are going very far you see that yes they are going very far but you see there is a pattern that people believe if you follow you will rise fast believe me it is nonsense any pattern that is not consistent with God's word will not take you far it will throw you up and crash you down that's why you see people rise and shine for two years and then they say their time has come and gone but is that what your Bible says doesn't it say that the path of the just talk to me is as a shining light so what is this up today and down tomorrow because there is a pattern if you have to put money in my pocket and bribe my way to making the world know you your success is at the mercy of my loving you the day i don't love you you are in trouble but when god is the one who lifts you you will be surprised when you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. Say, when you hold my
woman who is buried for five years and they will tell her there's one man is in our village he has the gift he has the gift all you need to do he has the gift and the woman says no i know god's pattern i know that that tree carries good so it's possible to go there and have a child but something will come with that child will come the trouble in your family and then the woman stays and uses her faith and the day god is ready to visit her god will not give her a child the woman will carry tip triplets one child being equivalent to 10 children you know that there are people who alone they are equivalent to a nation they give birth to one child because of that one child somebody you have been trying to see for years comes to visit you five people get a job because a child was born is that a child a child that does what a ceo cannot do a destiny helper from birth one week from birth is already a destiny helper and as adult as we are we couldn't help ourselves a child helps us that's not a child that's a miracle that's a breakthrough number three the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thrives on self-centeredness I want you to listen to my message Christ-centeredness I preached it I think earlier this year the language I I want it my way my way is the language of Babylon my way is proof you are eating of that tree men who eat of that tree have a way they talk it must be my way listen listen oh generation of young people let's listen my way my formula we live in a generation right now where there is an obsession for having things happen our way i want it my way and we take it a step further to force others to also do it our way that's the height of selfishness now most great relationships are destroyed because of the i factor myself i want it my way it has to be as it pleases me unfortunately when you come to the kingdom you learn that the more i goes down the more glory rises and i jesus if i be lifted up not you john said that i will decrease not just him that self i decreases and that you increase james chapter one verse one and two self-centeredness is one of the biggest tragedies of eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil james chapter three gave us 14 and 15 the bible says something very instructive it says listen but if ye have bitter envyings and strife in your heart glory not and lie not against the truth 15 it says this wisdom so there is a wisdom that is as a result of self and greed and bitterness my selfishness and my greed can make me act in a way that looks like wisdom but the motivation are we together now the motivation for that wisdom is bitterness self-centeredness the bible says that kind of wisdom descended not from above remember the knowledge of the good of good and evil it says but is earthly is sensual and is devilish so simply because I want to be the one to shine, I can say, Sam, um, because there is a gun inside that room, I say, Sam, why don't you go to that room and go and help me carry a basket? But the goal is so that he will be implicated, so that he will get out of the way for me to shine alone. It looks like wisdom, but the motivation is self-centeredness. The Bible says that wisdom is devilish our world today 
and sadly even in ministry is full of self-centeredness Romans chapter 16 quickly please verse 17 and 18 while I was studying this I found this scripture and it blessed me tonight is a very strong admonishment and I want you to listen carefully 16 and 17 okay read with me one two go now I beseech you brethren mark them which cause what division and offense contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and do what avoid them next verse for they are such that serve not our lord jesus but they are and by good words and fair speeches they deceive the heart of the simple your bible so i can be looking for money and i can say do you know what um the lord gave me a prophetic instruction that all of us are going to do this and that and that all of us are going to raise two two thousand and come and touch my shoe and your life will change and god knows he didn't give that instruction i just calculated that if there are five thousand people here and everybody gives two two thousand highest plus or minus i've already done the mathematics and then i come and say oh god said no their belly is their god their belly a man's belly can be his god meaning you can serve your stomach it's amazing what people do so that they can feel satisfied and don't care the effect on others and on the kingdom that's why people can kill i can look at this gentleman and plot with an assassin look at this these touts around that steal phones and do all of that they can come and cut someone's hand cut someone's neck to collect a phone of twenty-five thousand and go and sell it five thousand that is self-centeredness at work the amount it would take for that victim to treat himself or herself may even be more than what they sold that phone for. But because they need to smoke now, everybody, even if it means death. Listen, the moment the comfort of people does not become a factor for your consideration in your desire, you are self-centered. I want this it must be my way brothers we want this I'm the man of the house it must be my way I stamp it ladies I'm the woman of the house I'm not the one that married you you are the one that married me it must be my way and the naughty children come I'm not the one I gave her to this them to they say their own selfishness I wish you <laughs> who Jesus himself stripped himself of his glory and came to the earth for God so loved, not himself, for God so loved the world. I have loved thee with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. Selfishness. Lord, bless me so that everybody in my family will know that I'm not a small man. My elder brother who is shouting, Lord, bless me. Let me disgrace somebody for you. And God says, me? What do you think I am? Your mate? God sees my heart and I stand before you. I say this. I don't know how many things I do in my life considering myself as the chief benefactor. God is my witness. There are things I do for people today that I sit down sometimes and I think and I say, Kai, you man, now I will. I talk to myself, I say, now for you, Joshua Selman. 
when you do not have a heart for God and people, you are eating of the tree of life, of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of life takes the attention from you to others. Are we together now? As a preacher, if your whole church is around you, what you can get from members, how they can clap for you, then that means you're in trouble. Let me tell you, true ministry is not about the preacher. It's about the blessed people that God brings so that they are raised, so that they are equipped, so that their lives are blessed. I sit down here many times and I find tears when I see people stand to testify about the marvelous things that the word of God did for them. Listen. I have found out that there are not many things that are important in life. Did you hear what I said? I have found out that if you walk with God's ways, there are not many things in your entire lifetime that are really important. The complications that come, that our lives bring, are a web that the Babylonian system created for us. So we have depression. Go to the village. You will hardly find people with high blood pressure. For some of them, it's because they are not enlightened. But for some of them, through the wisdom of the ancient, they know the things that really matter. Did you know that when all is said and done in this life, there are not many things that are important. As busy as we are, six o'clock in the morning, we're on our way going. Twelve o'clock, we're on our way going. We do this and kill ourselves trying to eat, trying to gain relevance. I must buy the suit of 200,000 so that they will know. And that self-inflicted pain leads you to do things that you have no business doing. The moment you buy the 200,000 naira suit, the person you want to wear it for, you hear that they've made the person a senator. And you feel stupid for laboring for one year to prove a point. Listen, I have seen people who died trying to impress others. I've seen people who died trying to create something in their life that was not part of God's template for them. Meet a man on a deathbed right now and tell him what do you desperately want. He will not say an estate. He will not say I need an extra wife. He will not say I need a male fast. <clears throat> the only thing he will cry for is give me more time. That means time is the most valuable thing. And if God ever gives you time, you have everything. But we can waste time to look for what is less than time. God gave you time to serve him, time to love him, time to seek him. We were on our way going to, um, I think it was while we were going to Mubi, while we were going to the airport, I was talking to my people. And I told them, I said, guys, do you know that this you people's thing that you have forced me to buy has reduced my productivity by at least 10%? And they were amazed. I said, I don't have a problem with it. But um, you can sit down with somebody for 20 minutes and not even ask him his name because someone else is talking to you. And the person who is talking to you can even have gone to be with the Lord. Yet he's talking to you. And somebody that is alive that can help you now. You see that? Everybody. People have had accidents. Typing text while driving. People have done all kinds of things. You see someone stand by the roadside shouting alone. And just nodding with the earpiece. These things are turning us into fools. We have to remind ourselves that we are the highest of God's creation. I'm not against excellence. Don't get me wrong. But something is critically wrong that we must trust God for. It's a mind control system. It's controlling us. Right now when you stand, people look at you and they look at the phone you are holding. They see one kind of thing. They say, okay, you can stay there. 
that's a society that is depraved of the formula so it puts pressure someone who is busy saving money for something is under pressure let me carry this there are some you i i thank god because it doesn't allow me to read the prayer items of miracle service i'm sure i would have edited some before presenting them to god i said this is nonsense god please don't waste your time there's a crucial issue here someone is dying leave this iphone issue and kill the person dying So I can go to the place of prayer and spend three hours. And that three hours is not because I love God and his purposes. The three hours is because I'm manipulating the hand of God to meet my need. Oh God, if you give me a good job and you give me an iPhone, Lord, you too, you know you'll be glorified. And God says, how? How? Present your cause. There's no problem. How will I be glorified? Say, well, Lord, they will respect me. And say, have you have you found out how many times you mentioned your name in that equation? Say, no, I'm not a careless God. I don't waste. And yet another person is doggedly involved. And say, Lord, I know there is nothing that I have that is not yours. And while he's talking, God is telling someone, give him the latest iPhone every year. He said, God, I don't need it. He said, Me, I want you to need it. That's God for you. It's amazing how God can take someone else's prayer request and give another person who really seeks him. Please, when you go to the secret place, don't waste your time. Learn how to get God's heart. Nobody comes with his heart without his hands. If you invite my heart, my hand will follow. If you invite my hand, I can keep my heart far while my hand goes. Get his heart. And you will see what his hand will do. It's the hand that will remove the heart and put it for you. But with that heart will come more than you have ever imagined. I see God do things in my life and I see God do things in this ministry that sometimes... Okay. This God, ba, I want you to believe him. I will never bow to Babylon. Is a corrupted system. I have seen the fallacy of this system. They are arrogant. Even one hour to their destruction, they will still be arrogant. They have deceived many people today. The Babylonian system has made many people to go to hell. Are you aware of that? There are people who would have been on their way to heaven, but a system deceived them. They deceive many of our parents to not love God. They embrace education but they left God believing that they will be on their job forever they forgot that demons are still on earth while they were promoted their inability to be connected to God didn't give them the opportunity to make exploits and their lives are almost miserable today young people lie to themselves if you take this and smoke this you are a man and it sells a system and you embrace it let me tell you I introduce to you once again a system that is superior maybe controversial for a while but the results are like day and night you will rise above men men and watch life in wonder yes it's true I've made my choice I really have I'm not going to run my life based on a depraved system that has no respect for God I will not make money at the expense of my relationship with God no sir that is devilish money and God are not the same I will never allow any brilliant financial expert make me believe money and God is the same no in the beginning God not dollars in the beginning God not Naira in the beginning God not NMPC in the beginning God not APU in the beginning God and he says he's Omega too so whatever happens in between I'm sure that he's still there I live a very happy life truly speaking and I live a very peaceful life do you know why because I have learned in my life there are very finite things I'm doing with my entire life. The things I'm doing with my life, there are not many. 
these are the things I live for these are the things my entire course on earth will be for I don't have time to waste on nonsense there's no time wasting to prove any point high blood pressure if they tell you I have high blood pressure well pray for me but I don't think it's true I sleep like a baby I wake up happily this is the day the Lord has made I rejoice and I am glad in it wake up tomorrow morning and stand by the road and see the anger of people he's alone nobody's on the road yet he's already angry honing alone and angry this wicked world why is life like this and God says come up to me say no God stay out of my life and others even say it's because you came into my life have you heard people say that if the devil ever puts that thought in your mind my brothers and my sisters cast it that is because God came into my life that's why I'm not lifted if it was not this God thing I would have quietly bribed my way I would have been in NMPC now and people regret and make it look like God you are a disadvantage Bazankoma Bazankoma Nina Bazankoma you will only raise your children based on your own convictions if you don't fear god you can't make your children fear god they will fear what you fear you fear money you will raise your children like that whatever you serve is what they will serve he said, as for me and my house, as for me and my house, I've made a choice. I want you to join me. Make this choice. Make this choice. As for me, money will not stand between me and God. Fame will not stand between me and God. This devilish system, it doesn't mean we should run away from the world. We cannot. We are in the world. But there is another philosophy. Listen, we are praying in the world sam come if sam offends me the world teaches that sam has offended you an eye for an eye make sure you do something that bends him so that he will know but when you come into the kingdom it says to even pray for those who despitefully use you now you do that let me tell you what the world calls you mumu that's the name that's the name invented for those who obey god that far when you obey God that far, the world created a name for you. Everybody will be taking you for a ride. You are doing like an idiot. Revenge, Share. And Bible says, vengeance is mine. And you are thinking, do I do, I do something for Sam? David had the opportunity to kill Saul. And he left Saul. Ah, David, yes, your chance. David said, it doesn't work that way. There is a pattern. It is God that lifts. If I lift myself, I will keep myself in the palace. Give. That's the pattern of the kingdom. The wall says, take, search his pocket, remove everything and make it your own. That's how you rise. And that's the way many of us have taught. You can inflate school fees. Daddy, they've increased our school fees to 120,000. Print some letters that are a lie and they give you and you say smartness that's what the world calls it in this kingdom we call it death because God's system of justice will catch up with you for sure are we together we are going to pray tonight is a wake up call that you should stop eating from the tree although it looks like it has good there is a more excellent way the tree of life an ideology and a proposition that is superior by far you will live long and live happy you will give and people will think you're a madman yet you are happy because you understand the system that your children surround your table they don't run away from you like you ran away from your parents they come to you and love you that you can lock your house morning till night with your family members and say today we are worshiping god in this family not no time no time i need to make ends meet i need sharp sharp i need money there's one money somewhere and god is saying settle down god no 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 my the, the person has called me to come now i need to come 
a man can receive nothing intelligent people hear me lean not on your own understanding it says in all your ways acknowledge him I am aware that I'm not very smart in myself I've given up on my own intelligence outside of God that's why I need him like a matter of life and death and I say Lord if you do not speak my intelligence is too frail to give me the results that I seek these are the kinds of people that he loves when people stand and say Apostle Joshua Selman I remember that in this kingdom there is only one person who is glorified it is in his being glorified that you are also lifted and then I turn I say Lord Jesus this is unto you and they say no shine I say no we shine by letting him shine then he reflects his light on us that's how we get our own we don't shine and turn our backs at him say Lord I have brought you this as a trophy and he says you are doing this for me then I will lift you men of God be careful when men begin to clap for you and say without you the world will not move without koinonia you cannot rise I mean come with or without me God's sovereignty remains with or without me his kingdom and his purposes will continue if I die today you will only cry for seven days you will first try to raise me back if I don't refuse to wake up you will throw me you will pray and pray and be tired and one by one you will start going and throw me in a grave and cry one last time and I tell you that will be it you will think your life will not continue I will stand and I'm watching you with the angels and say bury that body and go <laughs> I want you to live a superior life a life that is free from fear if I fail what happens if I fail hey no, if I don't marry what happens if I don't have children no to deliver them who through the fear of death fear have all their lifetime subject to bondage if you want to buy a car today the reason should not be to prove a point Lord I need it for the comfort of my life for my family ultimately for your kingdom and God says pattern complied let the car come Lord I need it how my colleagues have car this small boy that was in SS1 when I was writing work and God said SS1 I was 33 years old when I saved the world I saved those who were also 70 years so if you are using age that carnality in you God will not prosper you and you will sit down there and say my colleagues and their children will come and be feeding you what if you say Lord is for your glory and I've taught you how you know God is being glorified in your life whoever takes the shame is the one who has been taking the glory did you hear what I said whoever takes the shame God cannot be taking the glory while you take the shame many of us are so shame conscious we got it from our cultures shame shame ah let him take the glory and let him take the shame is his namesake is defending not my namesake you enter your sabbath lord is for your glory for your glory i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory I will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king one more time sing it for your glory I will do anything just to see you to be hold you as my need. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. Gotta be where you are. You have tried hustling. Why don't you try a retreat?
try it try it you have tried running around why don't you get back and say lord here is my certificate whatever you do with it do all. i'm tired of applying every job i applied they didn't give me i bring my certificate to the secret place and i kneel before you am i not all yours is the certificate not yours and you lie down there and then you have a dream and you see someone giving you a job and god says this one i am the one giving you i took my hand to show you it's not by the arm of flesh i am the lifter of men i don't know how many times i would drum this revelation there is nobody who is self-made in the kingdom the idea of being self-made is a secular idea everybody is spirit made everybody is god made everybody is word made and nothing was made without him i am self-made is a joke of course when you are talking to secular people it's okay but in this kingdom no self-made preachers no self-made marriages no self-made wives oh i was beautiful that's why he married me he's a lie i'm a handsome guy walking in an npc no sir everything in this kingdom is god the epicenter of the kingdom is christ are you ready to pray i've shown you three things that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil can do listen it will destroy your home it will destroy your life there is a more excellent way is the way of the spirit it's a more excellent way is the way of peace many of us have joy but we do not have peace can i tell you peace is better than joy by far if you have the option to choose between peace and joy choose peace one thousand times before you choose joy once you have nothing in life if you do not have peace true wealth is peace true progress is peace he never calls himself the prince of joy but he calls himself the prince of peace rise up on your feet follow the way of the Lord. Lift your voice and pray. I choose to eat of the tree of life. It's a choice I'm making. I choose it on behalf of my ministry. I choose it on behalf of myself. I make up my mind that the way of the Lord is my way. The way of the Lord is my way. says I beseech thee brethren he's talking to believers that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice he says holy and acceptable unto God and he calls it your reasonable act of worship or service verse 2 says and do not be conformed do not pattern your life after this world the Greek word aeon the age and the thinking pattern that comes with it the fact that a thing is popular does not mean it is god's way it may be done by everybody but it may be a 
terrible antichrist formula for life then he says but be ye transformed from the word metamorpho that's where you get the word metamorphosis egg lava pupa adult allow yourself by the word he says that as we behold as in a mirror the glory of god he says we are changed metamorphosed in other words i am born from a system that is antichrist in its context my environmental conditioning makes for me to reject god i have been programmed by birth to consistently eat of the tree of life but i subscribe to a system of renewal that begins to edit my mind begins to transform my life and he says by that i will be able to prove that good that perfect that acceptable will of god the bible says to set your minds on the things above where christ is seated you can set your mind i choose to love love is a choice the hallmark of transformation in the kingdom is not power is not faith is love the depth of your transformation is not spiritual illumination it's not enlightenment is the degree to which the love of christ has been resident within your person i can know your degree of transformation not by the scarceness and the acquisition of the knowledge you have because knowledge will increase even prophecies will fail there remain at this tree he says faith hope and love he says the greatest is love haven't haven't given them an exegesis on the gifts of the spirit he said behold i show you a more excellent way i'd like you to pray and say lord let your love let your love this hatred this self-centeredness that has made me to do things i shouldn't do the selfishness that governs my life i cry that the love of god will be at work in me both for you and for people lift your voice and pray it's not enough to love god alone you must love people it's not enough to love god Take away the law of selfishness, oh God, from my heart. The desire to always be the object, regardless of the effect on people. Let it be about you. Let it be about people. Let it be about your kingdom. That my prosperity becomes about your kingdom, not just me. That my lifting becomes about your kingdom, not just me. Hallelujah. Our time is gone, but let's pray one last prayer. Listen, I give you a guarantee that if you subscribe to God's patterns and you do it sincerely, I give you a guarantee with my life. Sit back and get ready to see the wonder and the potency of God's word. You are going to cry and say, Lord, the grace to be unbending over your patterns. Regardless of what the world is saying, the grace to choose your way. Lift your voice and pray. The grace to choose your way. The grace, the grace to choose your way of spiritual growth. The grace to choose your way of lifting. The grace to choose your way of doing ministry. The grace to choose your way of doing business. The grace to choose your way of freedom from Satan and his cohorts. The grace to choose your way of love. 
the grace to choose your way of prosperity and abundance the way to the grace to choose your way and your formula for becoming great hallelujah hallelujah now we are going to pray I'll, I'll give us one more prayer but let me do it quickly because our time is gone we are going to pray as we are praying this prayer because it's, all of us are going to pray it but if you are here and you know that this prayer I'm about to give you have never surrendered to Jesus while we are praying I want you to run and come and stand here we are going to pray all pray a prayer of genuine rededication we are going to say Lord once again afresh I'm handing over my heart and my days to you and if this is your first time praying that prayer please I'd like you to make your way and come to the front wherever you are please if you see them coming clear the way for them but everybody lift your voice while they come pray and say father this heart of mine i hand it over to you i'm tired of allowing this system destroy my heart if you're coming come quickly everyone pray lord afresh take my heart take my motives take my days in the name of jesus let the reason for everything i do be your glory let the reason let the motivation behind all i do be to see jesus glorified please take it serious prophecy in motion prophecy in motion Ela baba ba shata la baka prata kata bala da bakaya rakata prekete le bokosi ya bala da da ba. Now we do not yet appear what we shall be like. It do not yet appear. The curriculum is still in progress. But when the master is done with your life, when you are tried as gold, you will be an object of praise. An envy for the nations. Lord, I will pass through the training. I will be built. Make sure you are, you are praying. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 1 the Bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses it says let us lay aside every weight your weight can be your looks your weight can be your designer suit your weight can be your ego and the pride and the arrogance that mediocrity has given you let the Lord smash it and bring you to a higher standard hallelujah listen this has been our cry in this place he is a pot and we are the clay whenever you come here you say Lord stretch me open me up and change me don't just come here tonight to say wow let's see what happens especially if this is your first time participate and let your heart be open the bible says he is the rewarder of them that diligently diligently that seek him without distractions your will be done hallelujah hallelujah let me tell you something the reason why success is valuable is because not everybody will ever get it are you listening to me greatness 
lies in the hands of those who have endured what others cannot endure. While you are praying, some people are in the beer parlor. Let me tell you something. We know about the mercy of God, but I want to tell you God is also just. Hallelujah. It is the justice of God that takes sinners to hell. The Bible says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. That means if you don't reap what you are sowing, God is being mocked. Are you listening to me? God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that man will receive it. He said, he that soweth to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal. You can choose today to pay the price and sow seeds that will, the Bible says, and Abraham was all Genesis 24 and stricken in age and God had blessed him in all things. Our parents left curses for us. Many of us are victims of the carelessness of the generations that have gone ahead of us. But you must take responsibility about your life. Otherwise, things will not change. This is why God brought you here tonight. As an indication of your desire to partner with the Holy Spirit in transforming your destiny. And let me tell you something. The kingdom of God operates in a reward system. You will not seek God and later run back and seek other things. As you seek him, they will follow you. God will be unjust if you have to seek him first and then run back to catch up in bringing other things. Uh -uh. As you seek him, those things that men follow will come to you. So open your eyes. Will you open your ears? Then you understand that the Lord is here. This is what God is asking you to do tonight. Open your eyes. Open your ears. Hallelujah. Bless you. Greet one another. Tell them lectures continue. Hallelujah. Bless you. Be seated. If you don't have a seat, stand. Or sit on the floor. Hallelujah. When it was time for the people to eat bread, Jesus said, tell them to sit down. If you can't sit down, you won't eat that bread. That bread is not just for people. You must sit down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What wisdom is this? Tonight I'm going to be sharing with us on a dimension of wisdom that I believe will fire somebody's spirit. We've been considering the subject of success. Let me tell you something. It's my desire that the least person among us will be like David. Hallelujah. You know, as I look at everyone here, I'm just imagining, I'm just imagining. If God will open your eyes to see how your five years will be like, how your ten years, some of you are escaping some things forever. Satan notwithstanding. Look, it plays to listen to the Lord. Are you hearing me? He said, Martha, you are distracted and offended by many things. But he said one thing. Everybody say one thing. One thing, one thing is needful. That you sit down at the master's feet. He said, this Mary has desired and this she has found. There is a master key in life. When you find it, you have found it. Hallelujah. What wisdom is this?
I want to reveal to us building from last week's message. Please, if you've not listened to last week's message, get it. Get it is very important. Hallelujah. Give me this mountain. We've been receiving testimonies. A very thought-provoking message that opens you up to the spiritual dimension of success. That lets you know that nothing just happens in this earth realm. There are those who are called the elites in this earth realm. Those who know. There are those who are the victims of the consequences and the decisions of the elite. Hallelujah. And tonight I trust that the word of God will provoke you. Make sure you write. Please if you are here without a writing material, beg your neighbor. And he told John, he said, write. Although he was in heaven, he said, write it. For these words are faithful and true. Write it. Hmm. A dimension of success that is bigger than science. Bigger than philosophy. Bigger than common sense. I want to show you a, a not a mystery, but I trust the Lord to equip us tonight with a higher dimension of the operation of the spirit. See, I want you to be so full of knowledge and truth that your life, it will be programmed automatically to be successful. You can't undo it again, even if you want to do it. Hallelujah. In chemistry, there are some reactions that are called irreversible reactions. Once they happen, they have happened. This is what is happening to your life. There is an irreversible spiritual reaction. Hallelujah. You will become something. And then when you become it, those who are running helter skelter will say, but this is what we've always wanted to become. And God will say, go and join the queue. Bishop talked of a 75 year old man who was in primary four. There are some classes in life you don't jump. Hallelujah. God designed it such that when you finish every class, a batch is given to you. So you can know who cheated. You can do expo in the university, but not in life. At the end of it, life will count your level and count the badge and say, oh God, you jump this, 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 go back. Many people will go back. The Bible says it's the thief that follows through the window. Is that in your Bible? Hustling can help you jump through the window. Is that true? But life will bring you back, I tell you. May it not happen when you have children. Because they will go back too with you. And as you are moving, they will be saying, Daddy, why? Lamentations 3.27 It is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. It is good that a man bear his yoke. The Bible says the glory of the young man is his strength. Now that you are young, you can pray. Now that you are young, you can press. Said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can walk again. He said, in the days of Samuel, when the word of the Lord was cast. May you be the light when darkness comes upon men. And that light will make kings to come to your rising. Gentiles and kings to the brightness of your rising. Like Sheba, they will come with their goods to reward your sacrifices of today. And Sheba heard of the wisdom of Solomon. It was so notable. She had to sail by sea and come to test him. The entire kings of the earth came together. Solomon is the biblical portrait of wisdom. I pray that this dimension of wisdom will fall upon somebody this night. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's write a few things. What does it mean to be successful in the kingdom? 
it's important that we understand the biblical concept of success I want to define success by God's standards because there are many standards that have been presented to many people including believers and many of us have received wrong perspectives of what we call success but we trust God for grace to reorder a lot of things say after me I received this dimension of wisdom say one more time I received this dimension of wisdom grant us this wisdom oh God grant us this wisdom I'll give you two definitions the definition of success in the kingdom number one it means to grow in the knowledge of God and in conformity to his nature and principles the first parameter to gauge and define success in the kingdom is not a car not a house not jeep wrong parameters in jeremiah 9 23 he says that let the wise man not glory in his wisdom let the strong man not glory in his strength hallelujah he said but let him that glory had glory in this that he knoweth and understandeth me the knowledge of god to the degree to which you know god and you have allowed your life to conform to his nature and his principles you are considered to be successful from the perspective of the kingdom so number one growing in the knowledge of god the bible says grow in grace and in the knowledge of god grow in grace and in the knowledge of god paul was speaking to the church he said my little children in whom i travail until christ be formed in you until the nature the character the formation of christ so that you become a visible manifestation just like jesus the bible says in him dwelleth the fullness of the godhead bodily in other words he was the physical expression of whatever you think god is hallelujah number two it means to experience the blessings of god in every area of life it's not enough to know god it means to experience look at me the bible says creation is waiting for the manifestation not the explanation of the sons of god there are many people who can explain success but there are very few people who will ever experience it in this life the world is not waiting for explanations they are waiting for the manifestation hallelujah so success in the kingdom means to experience the blessings of god in how many areas success is not just about money and finance no your health your family your relationships it means to experience the blessing of god everybody say the blessing of god in your career in ministry in whatever area of your life that your life will be an example a portrait there are certain people in scripture that represented the portrait of certain things the biblical portrait of a blessed man is abraham the biblical portrait of wisdom is solomon the biblical portrait of the prophetic is elijah the biblical portrait of the law is moses hallelujah the biblical portrait of love is john the biblical portrait of faith is peter and so on and so forth may you be a portrait that represents something to the body of christ in the name of jesus christ number three kingdom definition of success 
We're talking about wisdom. So I want to get it straight with us so that we know what we are not talking about tonight. Number three, it means to accomplish your life goals and your God-given assignment. Success in the kingdom means you accomplish your life goals. You accomplish your God-given assignment. He said, my meat, in other words, this is what gives me satisfaction. To do and to finish the will of him that has sent me. He said, lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. Jeremiah chapter 1, he said, before I formed you, I knew you, I called you, I ordained you to be a prophet. It means to accomplish your goals in life. To do and finish your God-given assignment. One more, number four. It means to be a blessing to mankind. Success, according to the kingdom definition, means to be a blessing to mankind both believers and unbelievers the bible says he gives rain both to the godly and ungodly when your life becomes a reference point both to believers and unbelievers you are successful he said let your light so shine before men not christians before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven Bible says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus that we may do that which we have been for ordained for hallelujah are you blessed write this word down exploits this is our year of supernatural exploits by the grace of God exploits it means unusual uncommon extraordinary accomplishment unusual uncommon extraordinary accomplishment Hallelujah. Let me give you the definition of wisdom. You're ready? Number one, this is the general definition of wisdom as we know. That wisdom is the accurate application of knowledge this is the general definition of wisdom wisdom is the accurate application of knowledge when knowledge is applied or information is applied accurately we call that wisdom are you there accurate application of knowledge but you see the wisdom i'm talking about tonight is not just the one that fits this definition it's a higher realm mark six mark six let's examine this kind this type and this dimension Mark 6. Say after me, I receive this wisdom. Are you there? Mark 6 verse 1. Let's hurry up. And he went out from there and came into his own country. And his disciples follow him. Verse 2. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. 
He said, and many hearing him were what? Astonished. Saying, from where had this man these things? He said, and what wisdom is this? Which is given unto him. And through that wisdom, what happens? He said that even such mighty works. I'm talking about the kind of wisdom that will grant you access to command exploits beyond the realm of this earth. This is not the kind of wisdom you find around. The Bible says Jesus walked in that level of wisdom. And when he began to talk, they asked him, they said, from where, where is this man coming from? And what wisdom is this? Everybody say, what wisdom is this? So let's define the dimension of wisdom we are talking about. This wisdom is the supernatural ability. The supernatural ability to use the inspired and the written word of God to solve life's problems and make accurate decisions. The supernatural ability to use the word of God both written and inspired to solve the problems of life and to make accurate decisions. This is the dimension of wisdom that the ancients used in the Bible and they commanded exploits. The ability to use the word of God and all the inspirations that come from the Holy Spirit to give it applicable value here in the earth realm and command results with it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's examine a few kinds of wisdom that we have. James 3. I want to take this carefully tonight because I want everybody to understand this. I want us to get it. The Bible took time to talk about this dimension of wisdom. In the book of Proverbs, wisdom even cries. Wondering why people are not interested in her pursuit. And it says wisdom is the principal thing. Let's look at James 3. We read from verse 13 to 17. But the verse of emphasis is verse 15. From verse 13. It says, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good life his works with meekness and wisdom. Verse 14. But if he have bitter envy and strife in your heart. That means there are some levels of wisdom that only produce this. Glory not and lie not against the truth. Verse 15. Are you ready? It says... This wisdom descended not from above. So we see the first kind of wisdom. This is the one we are talking about. The wisdom that comes from above. Hallelujah. The apostle is contracting, is, is contrasting a wisdom that comes from above with other kinds of wisdom. Number one, the wisdom that comes from above. This one is given by God alone. You don't read for it. You can't search it out. Let's continue. Number two, he said, but it's earthly. So we have earthly wisdom, human wisdom, what we call common sense. The ability to know that if you touch fire, it will burn you. The ability to know that you cannot sit down on water ordinarily earthly wisdom Sophia hallelujah number three sensual wisdom this is the wisdom that you get through study scientific wisdom philosophical wisdom hmm. wisdom that comes through studies hallelujah that's the kind of wisdom 
that makes all of the things that we have that help us relate with our environment and then the fourth kind of wisdom the bible calls it devilish or demonical wisdom this is the wisdom that is gotten from the underworld this is the wisdom that you get by your alliance and your allegiance with satan this is the wisdom that was used to build egypt a type of babylon it was the wisdom that pharaoh and the egyptians used and they accomplished super natural extraordinary things but hear what the bible says verse 17 this is the wisdom we are considering tonight he said but the wisdom that is from above come on now where is it from it's not from the earth realm i will show you that you cannot find it it does not have a physical location in the earth realm it's first pure peaceable gentle and easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits without partiality without hypocrisy this is the wisdom we are talking about this dimension of wisdom that cannot be gotten in this earth realm wisdom from above above and beyond anything that you know everybody say i receive that wisdom hallelujah there is this dimension of wisdom and there are men and women who are walking in this level of wisdom today solomon in scripture the bible says that solomon had an interaction with god and he was given this wisdom and the reign of israel during the dispensation of solomon as theologians tell us is the closest to the biblical portrait of what the millennial reign looks like there was no war hallelujah solomon became king and he brought rest and abundance to the nation of israel no war during his time there was peace and tranquility by this wisdom and tonight i pray that we will find it we will find it so that you and some of your family members will rest forever i pray for you that you will find it there are some things that when you find they become life they exempt you forever hallelujah job 28 how do we access this wisdom this supernatural ability that is not just found lying around this wisdom that defies scientific wisdom wisdom that is bigger than studies wisdom that is bigger than age age does not give this kind of wisdom this is the wisdom that when they gathered around with job many people were speaking out of different wisdom earthly wisdom sensual wisdom and early who said uh -uh. he said i was young and you people were old so i thought to keep quiet he said i thought that experience should teach wisdom but there is a spirit in man any kind of man hallelujah solomon was a very young boy when he began to lead the nation of israel 12 years of age but he became a king with this mighty wisdom and he ruled for 40 years 12 years how old are you those who celebrated their birthdays how old are you but a 12 year old boy confused and perplexed you see why he asked god for wisdom what will you expect a 12 year old boy to ask wife husband he said oh lord i'm but a small boy and god said don't worry there is a kind of wisdom that when it comes upon you you will produce exploits for 40 years hallelujah job 28 for the way of the Lord 
is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. It's a long reading. Let me read. This is Job. The Bible calls Job the richest, blessed, blessed man in the east. He was a great man. When the elders saw him, they stood up. The young men saw him and they bowed their face. They could not look at him. What dimension of wisdom brought him to that level of success? Read with me, 28. Surely, there is a vein for silver. That means, where silver is mine has been found by men. Is that true? And a place for gold where they refine it. Iron is taken out of the earth and bronze is melted out of stone. He set an end to darkness and searched out all perfection. The stones of darkness and the shadows of death. Listen. Verse 6. He said the stones of it are the place of sapphires. And it had the dust of gold. He's trying to tell you what the wisdom, the philosophical wisdom of men have been able to accomplish. He said through that wisdom, they have even been able to find where gold and silver is hidden. They can come here and not need to dig down to the earth to tell you whether there is gold or silver. That's a measure of wisdom. Hallelujah. But verse 7 says, There is a path which no fowl knoweth. Birds fly in the air. They see things that men cannot see. But he said there is a path that even the eyes of the bird cannot reach. No matter what plane it stands to search it out, it cannot see it. He said, and the falcon's eye has not seen it. The lion's whelps, the lion that does not fear any animal, it is not restricted. But he said, even the lion has not been able to discern that place. He put forth his hand upon a rock and overturned the mountain by its roots. He cut out rivers among the rock and his eyes see every precious thing. He binded the floods from overflowing. And the thing that is hidden bringeth forth it to light. Verse 12, are you there? Here's the question. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? This is a question. With all the excavations that happen, there are cranes today that build all kinds of towers in the earth. Man has been able to stretch and explore wisdom. There are houses that have been built inside the sea. There are bridges that they build across seas. But the Bible says, where is this very wisdom? That with all the advancement of science, men have not found it. Let's fast for the location of this wisdom. 13. He said, man knoweth not its price. Neither is it found where? In the land of the living. In other words, it is not in this earth realm. You cannot find it here. No matter how intelligent you are, this is the wisdom that is above and beyond this earth realm. The depth. Where is the depth? The deep places. The places of the occult. The places where they do all kinds of things. That even the occultic realm has this to say. It is not with me. And the sea said it is not with me. That's why even wealthy people in the earth realm have not been able to find this wisdom. And the recession that is coming will prove it. That although the, the sea represents the abundance of people. Because the Bible says I will give you the abundance of the sea. He said even the sea, those who have worked in abundance. Who claim they have found the wisdom. All of the people that Forbes magazine is listing. The Bible says they have not found it. And time will show that what they had was not wisdom. There was famine in Samaria. 
to an extent that people did not have any resource they finished eating animals they ate plants and grasses it was remaining only human beings and mother said let's start eating our children where were the philosophers and the, the intelligent people there will be a replay of that yeah the bible says it in malachi 4 that the earth will burn with an oven and all those who do wickedly will be embarrassed let me tell you the truth if you do not access this wisdom whatever else you have are just shadows are you getting blessed tonight the bible says 15 it cannot be gotten for gold that means you don't buy this wisdom with money if you could buy it with money the wicked wealthy men including the illuminati they will buy everything and be the custodians of it but the bible says this one even gold cannot buy it you can't buy it it's not the personal possession of any man it cannot be weighed for silver it is not valued with the gold of offer and the precious onyx and the sapphire the gold and the crystal cannot equal it and the exchange of it is not for the jewels of gold no mention shall be made of coral or of pearl or the price of wisdom is above rubies it says the topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it neither shall it be valued with your gold 20 whence then cometh wisdom where is this wisdom that everything that men value today cannot buy it this is what Solomon saw and when he got it every other thing that could not buy it followed him come on now i give you a master key the bible says that wisdom is the principal thing listen to the word of god when he speaks because they are life to those who find them many people will not listen this is the problem pastor it's not just the hearers there are some of you looking at me and you are saying is this thing really important it will be important when all else fail in your life My son, the Bible says, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your heart. Keep them in the midst of your heart. They are life to those who find them. I show you a way, a way of escape out of the nonsense that many people live forever. There are people perpetually forever. There are some who have enslaved their generations forever. One of it is America. 17 trillion u.s dollars in debt increasing by an average of 12 billion dollars every day how many generations will pay it they are the ones we call the wise they are the ones who are trying to follow the bible says they can't buy this wisdom are you hearing me with all the wisdom of the military and the wisdom of governments they've not been able to stop war but a 12 year old boy came with this wisdom and for 40 years there was peace in the nation where is this wisdom my god i pray that somebody will get this wisdom solomon with this wisdom made silver like the dust silver like the dust if you find silver outside you are traveling to Kano first thing tomorrow morning to go and sell it first thing but the time came people saw it and they just left it my god i received that dimension of wisdom i receive it let's finish up seeing it is hidden from the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowls of the air abaddon the place of the dead and death say we have heard its fame with our ears god understandeth his way this is the secret he said with all this confusion that men are having god is saying i know where it is i know where it is because i kept it and i know the place of it where is this wisdom how can you access this wisdom 
with this wisdom Daniel entered a strange land and he ruled through the dispensation of three different kings the same result the same result through the dispensation of three different kings hallelujah praise the Lord this dimension of wisdom we're talking about accessing this wisdom now this dimension of wisdom only comes from God the first thing I want you to know about this wisdom in and in accessing it is that it is given everybody say it is given God gives men you don't study it you don't look for it it's a waste of time God gives men hallelujah when you meet his conditions he will give it to you God gives men ready let me write the conditions for you the conditions for accessing this dimension of wisdom number one you must have a passionate love for God and his agenda the Bible says I has not seen nor ear heard neither has it come into the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him not them that speak in tongues not them that attend koinonia I has not seen ear has not heard what God has in store for who them that love him we are going to examine Solomon's life very quickly before we pray because he's the biblical portrait let me teach you something every time you are searching out for something in life stop confusing yourself go back to the word and look for those who were biblical portraits of that thing you are looking for the bible says look to abraham your father and to sarah that baby he said i called him alone and i blessed him that means as far as god is concerned when you are talking about blessings and prosperity abraham is god's portrait of a blessed man not bill gates not Warren Buffett, not Carlos Limas Hilu, not all of those great men. Thank God for them. But he said, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bear thee. When it comes to wisdom, it was given to Solomon. There are many people that operated that dimension of wisdom. Daniel, different people. But we are going to examine the life of Solomon. Let's look at his life quickly. Conditions for, for, for accessing that wisdom. Number one, passionate love for God. First Kings chapter 3. I prayed my heart out and I said, Lord, let your people find wisdom. May they find wisdom. Many of you will thank God for these teachings years to come. Are you there? First Kings 3. Let's examine the life of this biblical figure that was able to access this level of wisdom. The first thing the Bible has to say about Solomon in chapter 3 verse 3 is that and Solomon loved the Lord. Everybody say Solomon loved the Lord. And Solomon did what? The Bible didn't say and Solomon served the Lord. Solomon loved the Lord. See, let me tell you your love and passion for god is the number one thing he's searching for even beyond your service there are many people who serve god but they do not love god they don't have that passionate love they are only serving god because of formality or because of their environment you are in a family where everybody is a christian so you have to go to church you have to come for koinonia he said and solomon did what love the lord that means every other thing that he did was because of that love a man can serve god because of wife i hope you know that a man can serve god because of husband a man can serve god because of the whiplash of employment and you just find the nearest church and say ah let me find refuge in this place and rest before i find out what is going on people can serve god for various reasons for car for house for prosperity for job he said but solomon loved the lord do you love the Lord? The first condition for accessing this wisdom. This is why the kings of the earth cannot get it. Because they do not love the Lord. I love you Lord. I love you Lord. 
It's from the bottom of my heart. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. It's from the bottom of my heart. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. From the bottom of my heart. See, when you give God your heart, not your hands, not your tears, when you give God your heart, I'm giving you a big secret. Many Nigerians do not love God. Many pastors do not love God. They love ministry. They love suits. They want ministry advancement. But they do not love the Lord. Many leaders in this country do not love the Lord. Many young people, hustlers who keep hustling forever, they don't love the Lord. Many fathers, many mothers do not love the Lord. And we wonder why his blessings and his wisdom is far from us. Some of you here looking at me don't love the Lord. You love the house of God. You love the people of God. You love Christian music, but you don't love the Lord. And Solomon loved the Lord. And Solomon loved the Lord. Can that be your testimony? That will say, ah, and Eben loved the Lord. And Paul Maman loved the Lord. Some of you, as you say, and you love the Lord, your spirit will tell you, no way. You say, and you are now willing to love the Lord. Not that you love the Lord. I keep emphasizing this passion for God. Because if you are not rooted in love, success will make you run away from God. Are you hearing me? Success will make you do what? Let me tell you. If you enter real success, it's a double-edged sword. It can kill you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are levels. The, the problem is many people in Nigeria are so poor and unsuccessful, it cannot even cross their mind what true success looks like. And Solomon loved the Lord. That's the first condition. Number two, you must have a sincere desire to be a blessing. You want to access this wisdom? You must have what? A sincere desire to be a blessing. Same first Kings 3 from verse 8 and 9. God gave Solomon an open check. He said, Solomon, what do you want me to give you? Look up. If Solomon was a Nigerian and God says, Solomon, what do you want me to give you? His first question will be, is he only me? Will there be any other person with it? Say, no, only you. He say, ha, God, you better carry paper and buy room. Let me empty my whole life. Let me tell you what I want. The first thing is, any day anybody speaks against me, let him die. One. Two. All the people that have called me a failure, prove a point to them. Is that not true? Number three make those people serve me so that forever it will remind them let me tell you hear me if that is your desire i assure you it is not god's wisdom you will never get in life you can get any other thing but you can't get god's wisdom that way the bible says indeed genesis 12 verse 2 shall all the families of the earth be blessed there are many people who, who, who jump in church. Oh, I'm a millionaire. I tell them, you can get it by, by walking for 50 years. But I assure you, if it is through the wisdom of God, your heart must be ready to be a blessing. Otherwise, you cannot access this wisdom. Do you know how many self-centered, selfish people we have in this world? Some of you are saying, me, I'm not selfish. How much have you held that you know whether you are selfish or not? Solomon had the opportunity to say, Lord, me and my wife and all the people, bless me. Hear what he said, verse 8. He said, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people. People, people. When you love God truly, you will love people. 
many pastors preach day and night to congregations they don't love they are just trying to use the congregations to show they are making progress in ministry I told God if you never bless me in this life if I never become successful in this life I may do many things but not loving you is not one of them he has my heart believe me I've crossed a bridge and burnt it that I'll never return again when you see God blessing certain people check their heart I had Bishop Oedeko shout this thing he said you want to know the secret of my blessing and the blessing of this ministry check my heart beat for God there are many of you if God says between 12 this night and 1 anything you pray anything you ask me I will give you I mean Jesus appears to you the first thing is you wipe sleep from your eyes and stand and mention the name of all your loved ones and mention everything till five minutes to one you will sit down and say Lord I'm still thinking okay I remember do this for me for me for me I trust God that in the years to come in koinonia our testimony will not just be God gave me tea God gave me bread God gave me handkerchief but that God used me to do this for somebody else it is at that point we will clap right now we are clapping for God change me and we thank you for it God did this a millionaire is not one who has one million a millionaire is one who has become a blessing to people with up to one million oh God I want this I want fame I want power give me this church oh God I'm tired of wearing suit that tailor sold I want to wear the one that I'm buying up oh God change my story and God is saying for you or for me or for my kingdom God said well, this when we get to that bridge have you had people say that to you say when we get there we'll cross it you better God can see your heart everybody say I love the Lord and I desire to be a blessing see can I tell you if you are looking for success for yourself you don't need much effort you know but you know that how many clothes can you wear how many books can you write but when your heart is set for the kingdom of God then you are you are not ready for the avalanche of exploits that you will do there are many people who want anointing some people come to me they just say oh man of God these are Buddha people again they come oh man of God my ministry we've not been experiencing the hand of God and I've, I, I trust God for the oil on your life as if I'm selling it say man of God I believe if you touch me there will be an explosion and I'm saying look at this guy from the way he's talking from the way he's talking this guy is going to yoke and kill the sheep There are many people who want to go on air. Oh God, take me on air. God say you, for because of the way I love you, you won't cross this realm of ministry. When you see God not blessing some people, don't be too quick to beg on their behalf. Ask God why first. Some of our fathers have prayed. We have done Bible studies. We brought prophet, priest, king. We brought everybody to our houses. Change our story. Oh God, say amen. God said no way. You are the one shouting amen there. I have seen your heart. Are you ready to be a blessing? I'm telling you a secret. It does not cause God to change your family or your situation. But can he have your heart? Are you ready to truly be a blessing? Can you sit down today and see a family come and they love God? And you just look and the Lord say, build a, build a three bedroom flat for them. And don't announce it. Build it, put everything and come and tell them this was why God blessed me. You say, if I do this to you, here's the condition. It must be on newspaper. It must be on CNN. All of you must come and kneel down and say thank you and I will give you the key in front of everybody. That way, they will now know that I'm serving the Lord. It doesn't work that way. How many of you are ready to be blessed? How many of you know that if, if you are successful today, you will give scholarships, you will build orphanages, you will build churches. 
let me tell you the truth many of you are lying because you've never done anything with the 10,000 you have even your tithe you have not been faithful you just saw 1,000 hey! 1,000 you can buy palm oil you can buy salt Magi one tier Garif is the half one said it will reach Number three. So number one, a passion for God and his agenda. Number two, a sincere desire to be a blessing. Say I'm a blessing. I'm a blessing. Say I refuse to be a consumer. Say it. I refuse to be a consumer. I'm not that man praying for God to bless others. Have you had that kind of nonsense, satanic, anti-God's agenda prayer? Where they say, may God bless you all. As you bless, please, our pocket is open. Drop it for us. What kind of cause is that? There are people in life who are waiting. That's, that's their prayer. Oh God, bless this guy. He has already gone far. Just finish with him for my sake. Because we hate paying the price. Say, God, please. The way, the way Tokumbo is going now, Lord, I thank you. Keep blessing him. I say, TK, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. The prayer I would have done for myself, I'm doing for you. Don't forget me. No, no. You must desire to be a blessing. Because you see, how can you pay so much price just to bless others? Does it look fair? It's not, it's not the attitude of natural men. When you suffer alone, what happens? You chop alone. That's what they've taught us in Nigeria. Pastor, <laughs> they can't die alone. Hallelujah. That's the language of Nigerians. I suffered alone. Were you there when I was suffering? Say no. So now it's my turn to chop. I don't know you. I don't know your name. We have never met. Say Fatima, say Fatima, me. I don't know you. I've never seen you. If your heart is not set to be a blessing. I am telling you, I'm not just talking of money. You will never really get anything. Hallelujah. A sincere desire to be a blessing. Number three, to access this wisdom, you need to operate the law of giving. First Kings 3 verse 4. That's what we see in the life of Solomon. Everybody say the law of giving any day i talk about the law of giving don't be confused let me tell you straight to the point what i'm talking about the law of giving is number one your tithe whenever i talk of the law of giving it's not some unambiguous thing number one your tithe malachi chapter 3 from verse 20 to 12. let me tell you something i don't care any other giving you give even if you give one billion for any project if your tithe does not precede your giving life you only wasted your time are you hearing what i'm saying your tithe is your number one obligation in the law of giving please listen to me i pray that god will make many of you see that this is not some scheme by men of god to collect money from you because if that is it you you will never be successful this is not about money it's about maintaining an open heavens the Bible says, bring ye all your tithe into my storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, hear which saith the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. He said, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall your vine cast its young. And he says, you will be a delight some land and you will be blessed. Seven prophetic blessings. That follow a tighter many people think tight is all about money tight is about giving god first place in your life hallelujah oh how much it's just five thousand even god understands oh my father gave his tight for me all these flimsy excuses will keep you a failure in life say i receive grace to tight be consistent I have envelopes, envelopes in my house. Anything that comes in, I've told you this is the secret of the blessings of ENI. It's not a mystery. 
the finance department are on perpetual instruction i don't care money for what is raised in this place before we touch one naira or one dollar or one pound one whatever it is the tithe is taken first when we started the school of ministry the same thing the tithe as i speak to you right now the tithe for the collection of this night is already set there were many trees in the garden of eden but god kept the tithe and told man don't touch it every time you take what god did not give you he will return back or something he will collect some something that he had given you say amen every time some of you you take the tithe what happens he will drive you out of the garden hallelujah could this be the reason why some of you may never go far in life you take ten thousand you say lord in my heart i've given you but right now let me just use this quickly let me just buy panadol i promise you there's one twenty thousand coming on wednesday when it comes i will add it these are gimmicks by satan to kill you some of you 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 in your mind you even have it in a pen your tithe from march to now that you plan to give god but you have not yet given he said god you look at the heart number two your kingdom investments i'm talking of your offerings i'm talking of your seeds that are sown in the house of god if you have a business tight you have a church tight you have anything tight tight and you and open heavens so your kingdom investments and then giving to God's servants, prophet offerings, and giving to the needy. These are the things that constitute the law of giving. The Bible says in 1 Kings 3 verse 4, it says Solomon offered a thousand. Everyone say 1,000 bond offerings. Say 1,000. Look up. We are not up to 1,000 in this place. Do you know what it means to see a field as big as football field? And you just stand from somewhere and see them dragging animals 800 801 802 870 900 950 991 to 1000 and then they caught all of them you just see blood spilling around what waste what waste and god saw a man doing this while solomon got to the 900 one he said lord steal for you he got to 991 he said lord for you and he killed the 1000 and god said no way god himself had to come down and say solomon you have touched me you have touched me in what do you want come on now there are some sacrifices that will compel the presence of god hallelujah in my little life i've had the opportunity to do some dangerous givings i've told you God does not love a cheerful giver alone. God also loves a crying giver. There is he that weepeth and bearing precious seeds. There is he that weepeth. There are some givings that you don't just give laughing. You will give and cry. You will give and call yourself a fool after the service. How be it? Your faithfulness will endure finally under accessing this wisdom ask of the lord first kings 3 verse 9 solomon acts of the lord solomon acts of the lord for an understanding heart james 1 verse 5 the bible says does any man lack wisdom let him ask of the lord let him ask of the lord tonight we are going to be asking i told you this wisdom see this wisdom comes to you from god it's an impartation solomon discusses with god in the night in a dream the next day he wakes up and he starts judging with that wisdom immediately immediately daniel daniel i'm going we're going to consider that scripture quickly before we pray daniel when the king had a dream could not interpret it he said let's just rest he rested that night that wisdom worked this is not the kind of wisdom that will happen over time uh -uh. when it comes on you it speaks at once 
Hallelujah. Finally, before we pray, let's consider the workings of this dimension of wisdom, the operation. How does it work? I've told you what it is. I've told you how to access it. How does this wisdom work? Proverbs 18 verse 1. The first way is the sacrifice of meditation. This is how this, this is the first way this wisdom begins to find expression. What did I say? The sacrifice of meditation. Proverbs 18 verse 1. The Bible says true desire. A man having separated himself, seek it and intermeddle it with all wisdom. Meditation. Meditation. Many of us do not understand the power of meditation. When you set aside time and you sit alone and you begin to allow the Holy Spirit to find expression and then that wisdom begins to find expression. Meditation. Daniel chapter 2 from verse 14 to 6. Please let's look at it quickly. I want to show you a very sound warning and impart wisdom for some of us. Daniel 2. I cried for many years to the Lord. I said, Lord, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Daniel 2 from verse 14. Are you there? Say amen. Let's read it quickly. Verse 14. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, who was gone for to slay the wise men of Babylon. They could not interpret the king's dream. Look at this wicked king. You had your dream and you forgot and you were angry. Just like many people in Nigeria, they blame people for their failed dreams. They wanted to be great, it didn't happen. And now they're angry at everybody. Listen, Daniel said this in verse 15. And he answered and said unto Ariok, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariok made the thing known to Daniel. 16, listen. He said, then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he should give him, that he should give him. This is what has killed a lot of people in our generation. We are in a rush for everything. That's why the spirit of wisdom, the touch of wisdom is not upon our lives. We are in a hurry to make money, a hurry to do everything, a hurry to get that job. A hurry to do everything in life and so we don't consult with God we don't pray we don't have time to meditate to allow the wisdom of God to edit our lives the Bible says many are the counsel that are in a man's heart however it's a many are the purposes in a man's heart however the counsel of the Lord that shall stand we never do anything as in, in a minute let me tell you something anybody that comes to meet you with anything in life in a rush run away quickly did you hear me run away quickly daniel said uh -uh, king you are rushing this thing too much he said give me time if you give me time i will meditate and the lord will reveal to me and i will tell you let me show you another scripture we'll soon get up and pray are you there verse 19 he said then was the secret revealed unto daniel in a night vision when he he had time and he went in the night meditating upon this thing and during the night time not the night moment the night time this thing was revealed to him Every time you take time, see, there 
there is nothing that should compel your excessive hurrying in life because your hurrying in life will produce casualties that when you get to that place it will hurt you and those who have been walking slowly will come and pass you you see somebody running and is running on 200 and somebody is running on 120 the next thing they are bringing the mirror out of the bush and the man is sitting on the blood on the ground with blood and somebody who was going on 120 will come and pass and say sorry what was the rush for especially for some of us who are men make sure you think through don't make stupid decisions no matter how much you think you know the answer there is a way that cement right onto a man but see great leaders are not men of hasty decisions they think through no matter what the urgency is learn this is a big secret in life daniel said tell the king to give us time and this wisdom will work hallelujah the sacrifice of meditation everybody say i receive grace to meditate some of the things you see today are the things that we get by meditation this is how i get the messages for the week i spend time i pray and i just sit in his presence and allow this wisdom that cannot be found in the land of men when that wisdom comes you know accurately what it is that god wants you to do hallelujah number two this wisdom manifests when you begin to speak or make decisions is supernatural is supernatural it's not wisdom that is rehearsed all of you some of please look at me look at me let me show you that some of you have already been working in this thing how many of you have had someone come to counsel you i mean somebody come for you to counsel the person and you know that you are not married yet you are talking to couples about something there is no way you would have known you did rehearse it you did rehearse what to tell them this is that wisdom it's like you are prophesying somebody will ask you a question and you begin to speak you are talking and for hours at the end of it you wish you recorded your message because you know you can't find it again this is that dimension of wisdom are you listening to me somebody say i received that wisdom luke 21 verse 15 if you can project it using the amplified version but let's just look at it. Luke 21, quickly. Somebody will access this wisdom tonight. In the name of Jesus. Somebody will access this wisdom tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Luke 21, verse 15. It said, For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which your adversaries shall not be able to resist nor gain say listen listen this wisdom begins to manifest when you are speaking it's not something that you have that you say i have it I can. no the moment you open your mouth you will begin to utter things that are not of this realm hallelujah and so you go to your office and they are deliberating on a decision and many people are just bringing foolish theories that are not applicable and you keep quiet like Elihu suddenly you will open your mouth he said open your mouth and I will feel it he didn't say I'll open your mouth when I feel it open your mouth and I will feel it suddenly you begin to communicate wisdom and they look at you my father calls me a young man with gray hair ah there is a dimension of wisdom that when you speak people will look at you and say no this cannot be wisdom that is accumulated by experience this is an impartation of this dimension of wisdom i pray in the name of the lord jesus that from today as you open your mouth to speak you will speak that order and that operation of wisdom many of you have used your mouth to close the doors of your destiny because what came out was foolishness not wisdom or what came out was just scientific knowledge i pray for someone tonight i pray for someone tonight may god make that when you meet your destiny helper the right words 
that will be upon your lips that will compel men there are many people today moving around with business proposals and they know what books say they should say but the bible says i will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece could this be what you need to tell your project supervisor for him to let you go with your work could this be that this is what you need to tell somebody to help you with capital for your business could it be that this is what you need to tell somebody to employ your loved ones let the opening of our lips utter wisdom that is beyond this realm so that you will be noted for that wisdom Matthew chapter 10 verse 19 to 20 we are running Matthew chapter 10 I feel the power of God in this place we are going to pray this this wisdom must hit somebody this night this wisdom must hit somebody this night someone must write it in your jota that on this day you encounter the dimension of wisdom that cannot be found in the land of the living verse 19 matthew 10 verse 19 but when they deliver you up that means when you are in trouble he said do not be anxious how or what you shall speak for it shall be given you in the same hour he said it shall be given to you when that means when you stand even if you don't know what to say some of you when they invite you to preach you are shaking you are saying oh god what will i say hold on hold that mic now with that spirit of wisdom and you will be amazed at the utterances that will come out of your lips verse 20 he said for it is not you that speak but the spirit of your father that does what speaks in you so although you have seen a man what is really happening is the spirit of god speaking to a man that's why you weigh the man and weigh the wisdom that is coming and say what wisdom is this i pray that in years to come this will be the testimony that they will produce a documentary on some of you and name it what wisdom is this you will do things that defy the wisdom of men that the world will celebrate you for it solomon operated in this dimension of wisdom there were two women who came two harlots one slept on a child and by that wisdom he deciphered accurately and the bible says his fame was spread abroad there is a level of wisdom that will ripple across territories people will hear it let me tell you something people have mouths that can talk they can as well talk about your wisdom and say when it comes to brother so and so no this is a this this guy operates in a class of wisdom that is not known to men Doth not wisdom cry Doth not wisdom cry look at how solomon cried with this thing in the book of proverbs solomon said wisdom is begging people wisdom stands on the street and see many people looking for success Doth not wisdom cry wisdom was crying and said pay attention to me with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches but people will not listen The third way this wisdom manifests is through innovative and inspired ideas inspired thoughts job 32 verse 8 but there is a spirit in man and that spirit can bring inspiration everybody say inspiration that dimension of wisdom How did they build the tabernacle in the wilderness look at me they were in the wilderness there was no source of help but they got wisdom from God and they built the tabernacle in the wilderness brothers and sisters I can kneel down and beg you tonight 
do not trivialize the power of what I'm telling you. There are some messages until you get to certain realms, it may not be useful. But when you get to that realms, you can never be a leader without this. You will waste your time. There are many frustrated men of God who have power but don't have wisdom. It takes wisdom. It takes wisdom to be a leader. It takes wisdom to be a father. It doesn't take age. It takes wisdom. It takes wisdom to command prosperity. It doesn't take years of time. It takes this wisdom. Lastly, dreams and visions. Daniel chapter 2 from verse 19 to 23. The Bible says, And the secret of the Lord, that secret was revealed to Daniel in the vision of the night. How many times have I laid down to sleep and in the visions of the night, God opens things to me that cannot be found in this realm. That's how some of these messages come. See, can I tell you something? Some of these great men like John Muen and the rest, the reason why some of their songs are timeless is because they came by this wisdom. It is this wisdom that transported it. There are others whose songs just came from musical argument. So it will change as time changes. But there are others it comes with a spirit. The wisdom of God comes from the realm of eternity. That's why some of these messages are timeless. Even after 30 years, they will still be relevant because they come by the wisdom of God. There are some messages that have gone extinct. As the church of God is growing, they pack them and throw them away. But there are certain fathers of faith who have gone to be with the Lord. But their messages are timeless because they were a byproduct of this wisdom. Get wisdom. Get understanding. He said, exalt her and she shall promote you. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. It says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us. So, he spake to us in sundry times and in diverse manners. Communicates his wisdom to us. Shiva katabalaraba. An idea that people will be dying for in the night. See, do you know that Solomon received his wisdom in a dream? If he had a roommate, the roommate will never know that something has happened. You just wake up in the morning. Come on now. Not the same person who slept. I pray that someone will sleep in the night as an ordinary person and wake up in the morning with an order of wisdom. I cried to God years in my life. I said, Lord. I want you to give me this wisdom this message i'm preaching to you tonight is an old message it's an old message i'm preaching to you my experience i found this thing and i said come on lord a 12 year old boy lord i'm available give me wisdom that is bigger than my level in life Give me wisdom that is bigger than my experience. Give me wisdom that is bigger than everything I know. That wisdom will take you to a place where everybody around you is an elder except you. Yet they will give you a seat among the great. There are some of you, this wisdom will make, if you ever see your colleagues, it's just because you want to discuss with them. But as far as success is concerned, uh -uh, it will take you to a realm. Everybody uh, is far older than you. They'll say, how did you come this fast? It takes men years to do this. Exploits by this dimension of wisdom. Through wisdom is any house built through wisdom through wisdom through wisdom through wisdom through wisdom there are times I'm meditating nobody distracts me because at that time the spirit of wisdom comes into my room and begins to bring illumination witty ideas inventions on common solutions that are not known to men hear me many of you will have it may not speak now because of the time component of life but wait until he starts speaking see there are some of you i tell you the truth 
Zaria is too small for you. Everybody is watching you. But you know that what is inside you is bigger than Zaria. It's bigger than Nigeria. That young man called Zuckerberg. Before Facebook went far, there were people who wanted to buy it. Before the idea became global. And they wanted to buy it for 8 billion. He had not even become a millionaire then. He was just, they wanted to price his idea. He said, no, I know this thing will shake the world. Eight billion is too small. At that level, see, I tell you the truth. In my mind, I've left Zaria. In my mind, I'm out of this country. There are some of you, the Bible says there are some people, this earth was not worthy of. This earth was not worthy of. You are seated in the crowd some of you as you are looking at me like this that's how one day you will sit down wisdom will give you a seat there are no vacant seats only the one wisdom creates the seats in nigeria have finished but wisdom can make room it can give you a seat i bring you a message stop wasting your life and wasting your time galloping in confusion you can walk circumspectly no matter what the price is pay it with wisdom and you will know you are paying it for the last time hallelujah rise up on your feet let us give our generation what our fathers did not give for the next five minutes we are going to cry I want you to take it serious you are going to cry your heart the Bible says let him ask of God I have seen this in my life in a measure I can tell you there is something called the spirit of wisdom you will shock men lift your voice and begin to cry Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. So go protecate. Thank God for your degree, but get wisdom. Thank God for PhD, but get wisdom. Thank God for books, but get wisdom. That divine ability to take the word of God and translate it. Come on, pray, sister. Pray, my brother. Pray for the sake of your generation. Pray it. Say, Lord, I always knew I'm not ordinary. Come on, pray like a warrior. Pray like a champion. Like a destiny shaker, you will do terrible things in righteousness. You will do terrible things. The wisdom of God, the wisdom of God. You will shock men. You will shock men in business. You will surprise people. In entrepreneurship, you will bring for things that have never been done before. In your career, you will excel through wisdom. In your academics, wisdom will give you a place that your age cannot give you. Wisdom will take you beyond your geographical limitations. Pray. 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 I receive this wisdom. Take it serious tonight. This is a destiny decision. Take it serious tonight. This can be the difference between you and other people. Show close compare a Korea Take it 
Self-centeredness from my life forever. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, kill it. Greed. Self-centeredness. Take it away from my life. That mentality of I, me, and myself. That mindset. You are just thinking of yourself. No, you will never access wisdom that moves. I kill self-centeredness in the name of Jesus. I consider others better than myself. The spirit of greed departs from God's people. This Nigerian mentality of greed, this Nigerian mentality of self-centeredness, the God from us, we are the blessed ones, empowered to bless mankind, empowered to bless mankind, empowered to bless mankind, empowered to bless mankind, empowered to bless mankind. Fire is burning in this place. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I will read this and we'll take the last prayer point. I tell you, this wisdom is hitting somebody in this place. I know it. Some of you will write it from this night. Listen to me. Proverbs 18. I will read it. Oh my God. Some of you, your, your family will thank you on their knees. They will thank you. They will thank you. You may look like you are nothing. I don't care how your past has been. God specializes in using the things that people think. Some of you have failed so much in life. You don't ever think you can make it. I tell you, take advantage of this wisdom. And see how you will be in command of life. Hallelujah. Listen. Let me just read this quickly. Listen. Proverbs 18. This is wisdom speaking. Doth not wisdom cry. And understanding standard up. Standard understanding put forth her voice. Listen. She stands at the top of high places. By the way of the places of paths, listen. She cries at the gates 
and at the entry of the city at the entrance of the doors unto you O men i call this is wisdom crying calling for attention calling businessmen for attention calling entrepreneurs for attention calling ministers for attention calling family people wisdom is begging and saying you have paid attention to other things can you not give me your attention there is a baptism going on in this place this night he said oh ye simple understand wisdom and ye fools be of understanding heart here for I speak of excellent things and the opening of my lips shall be right things he said all the words of my mouth are in righteousness there is nothing crooked wisdom that will take you above tricks and pranks receive my instruction verse 10 and not silver stop chasing money stop chasing money stop hustling you will waste your time even if you get it it will not be sustained it will give you high blood pressure it will give you stroke wisdom will give you success with the rest listen 11 for wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared with her he said i wisdom i dwell with prudence and i find out knowledge of witty inventions verse 14 we'll just read 14 to 16 and we'll stop listen it says counsel is mine there is no foolishness when you walk with me sound wisdom he said i am understanding and i have strength verse 15 by me kings reign kings don't reign by election are you hearing me by me kings reign this is wisdom telling you the things it has done by me kings reign and nobles and even the judges and princes decree justice by me princes rule and the nobles and all the judges of the earth listen 17 i love those who love me and those who seek me early shall find me those who seek me early those who seek me early hear this verse 18 final verse riches that men die for riches that men die for he said they are with me they are not in Aso rock they are not in london they are not in any bank i tell you they are with me riches and honor are with me yeah durable riches long lasting riches and righteousness we are going to pray final prayer point you are going to say lord let this wisdom fall on me many of you as you pray this prayer i tell you the wisdom of god will hit you some of you will sleep this night you will wake up with visions lift your voice and begin to pray let it fall oh god let it fall oh god wisdom from above make leaders with wisdom let it fall wisdom that will shock the world wisdom that will shock the business world wisdom that will shock the entrepreneurial world Aya. wisdom that will shock men in your career wisdom that will make your degree meaningful wisdom to produce a model family wisdom to live perpetually in hell wisdom to command prosperity 
Jake Brosco Cry. The wisdom is falling. The wisdom is falling. The wisdom is falling. Shake it, take it, take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Open the heavens, oh God. Open the heavens, oh God. Open the heavens, oh God. Receive a baptism. Shake a poriata. Koinonia. Be baptized with the spirit of wisdom. Koinonia. Be baptized with the spirit of wisdom. Koinonia. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let business moguls arise from this wisdom. Lead us. The true secret of kingdom success. The true secret of undeniable kingdom success. Shake it. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. See. Listen. Listen to me. I tell you something. Take this wisdom from my life, and there is no Joshua Selman again. This is the mystery behind this young man you are seeing. If you can believe this. The day God told me I was not on stage. The day God gave it to me, you were not there. I tell you, students of the school of the spirit, I want to release upon you a key tonight. I want to release upon you something that will mark your life. For if you believe it, truly you will receive. You can argue it. You can sit down there and watch others or you can humble yourself and say lord this is it this is it my spirit tells me this is it lift your hands i want to pray out of the abundance of grace that has been given i want to pray i pray that as i declare may it come upon somebody right now in the name of jesus father you gave me this message this is the secret that scientists have not been able to discover this is the realm that defies the limitation of man's wisdom this is the true secret of kingdom success we started building last week and i want to pray i tell you the heavens are open in the name that is above all names at the count of three i tell you it will hit this building in a very mighty way at the count of three i just like you to shout after the count of three i receive and begin to receive it in your life it will change your life are you ready now one two three lord let it fall take it take it take it take it take it take it take it, take it. Take it. Take it. Receive it a baptism, a fire, a baptism, the fire of wisdom, the fire. It comes from above. Let it change your status. The wisdom of Solomon. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Shake it, 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 it. Be marked with wisdom. Be marked with wisdom. In business. Be marked with wisdom. In your job. Be marked with wisdom. Wisdom to speak. Wisdom to preach. Wisdom to attract wealth. Wisdom to attract honor. Wisdom for health. Take this wisdom and rescue your families. Take this wisdom 
and change your CGPA. Take this wisdom and change your marital status. Take this wisdom. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take this wisdom and end poverty in your life forever. Take this wisdom and stop begging forever. Take this wisdom and be in command. Command in ministry. Command in business. Command in your place of work. Command in your home. You may be the last born, but let this wisdom take you to the front. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for you. Tonight, as many of you sleep, I declare the experience of Solomon. Let it happen to you in the name of Jesus. May the angels of wisdom visit you. May the God who gave Solomon wisdom impart you tonight. That business idea you have been praying and fasting for, tonight let it come by wisdom. In your place of meditation, let leadership wisdom come upon you. Hallelujah. I pray for you. The same way the cattle of Jacob were spotted so that anywhere you saw them, you knew that these were Jacob's cattle. I pray for you because you have come for Koinonia tonight. Favor has been our mark in this place. But to that favor, I add wisdom to you. I add wisdom to you. Go ahead and give God thanks. Go ahead. Thank Him. I tell you something has happened to you this night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spend time. Spend time meditating. Stop running around. Where are you going? Say, I'm looking for money. No. Go back to your secret place. May God raise wealthy people here. Amen. You know what to do with money. So God is not afraid of giving you. I pray that one favor connection. Don't say I am young. That's a curse. I pray to you receive it. Ladies, don't say we are ladies. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, you are here and you've not given your heart to the Lord. What a night that God is releasing wisdom. I want to pray for you right now. Or you have given your heart to the Lord once. But you've really found yourself distracting. You, are, you have been distracted here and there. The author of wisdom is calling you tonight for a fresh start. Please make sure you do not hear this voice tonight. And just take it lightly. Because God is doing great things. If you are not born again, you do not have access to this wisdom. I don't care even if you fell down. It doesn't work that way. So to make it right with God or make a first time decision for God, please leave your seat and come out here right now. Right now. There's anybody like that, leave your seat and come out here right now. And I will pray with you. In one minute, we have people like that. Very quickly. I'll give you one minute quickly. We're out of time. Anyone making this glorious decision? Don't be ashamed. Appreciate her. Bless you, sister. Bless you, sister. Bless you, my brother. I see you coming. Keep appreciating them. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be ashamed. You are encountering true wisdom tonight. 
thank you for coming out this is unto the Lord your maker you will mark this day as a turning point in your life lift your hands and pray after me say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart I ask you tonight to be the Lord of my life I repent of my sins and my old ways I declare that from today I'm saved I'm a child of God Holy Spirit come and live in me and grant me this great wisdom from today I am a different person in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father thank you you have brought these ones by your spirit change them let this not just be an emotional experience change them in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you listen you will never lack wisdom in your life again in the name of Jesus Christ you are blessed please follow the ushers in one minute they'll have your details and we'll follow you up tomorrow by 5 p.m. at chapel God bless you thank you sister Hallelujah. please keep standing we'll soon be out of here if you're worshiping with us for the first time this is your first night here in koinonia i'd like you to leave your seat and come out gloriously we want to bless you thank you for coming thank you for coming bless you bless you my appreciate them bless you come on koinonia this is not your best bless you bless you thank you thank you the lord brought you here to access wisdom the lord brought you here to access wisdom hallelujah keep coming god bless you hallelujah thank you so much we celebrate you thank you for coming the lord brought you here to bless you hallelujah how many of you were blessed today thank you so much do something with what you have received you can be emotional about this teaching and it will never change you but if you do something with it no power in existence can stop it hallelujah we're anointed people and we want to pray for you if we pray for you you are blessed Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.